Welcome, everybody. I'm C.J. Ward to West of Tulsa. We are broadcasting from Studio 3 in Ventura, California, and we have most of the crew here. Beth is not here today, but we do have Gabe. Yo. We got Helm. How you doing? And we got Dan Brockett over there in control. I look forward every day to coming in and just saying Brockett. <laughs> it's, a, it's a good feeling, right? It's a good feeling, yeah. <laughs> All right. Hey, we have a great show today. Uh, if you like... Japanese cars, vintage Japanese cars, if you like, Hot Wheels, Matchbox included, right? Okay. Hot Wheels and Matchbox, we have a fun hour for you coming up. Frank De Jesus joining us now. Um, you have organized the old Japanese car meet, which is yes. in Los Angeles, right? Tell us a little bit about it. Yes, well, it was, it, originally it started as, you know, just a few of us just gathering in a parking lot. But let me just kind of back up a little bit, because when my car became a classic, I, I felt so proud. I'm like, I finally have a classic, you know. And uh, I, I went to one of the local uh, classic car meets or, or shows. This was at the Bob's Big Boy. Mm. Uh, in, uh, it's, uh, it's right next to Burbank. So I got there, and then uh, I kind of got some slack from, you know, the older guys with the Chevy Novas and all the other American <laughs> muscle and they were like, hey, what are you doing parking here? This is for classics. I, oh, I, I felt so proud. This is a classic. You know, <laughs> and some of them started looking at the car. Like, I don't see any chrome on it, so you got to park somewhere else. Oh. I was like, well, I didn't feel welcome. So I, I didn't give up. I, you know, I, I kept going a couple of times. And, and um, by the third time, you know, uh, they were kind of giving me the stink eye because, you know, People were crowded around my car more because they can relate to it more. Mm. Because, hey, my, my aunt used to have this car. I used to drive this in high school, whatever. So it had stories for me. And these guys were just kind of like giving me this thing. I like, w what's he showing over there? You know, like popping my hood and stuff. Mm. But they, it just kind of, it became more of a hostile because now they would, they would try to block the parking before I got there. So <laughs> I just, I, you know, I just got together with uh, some of my friends who had similar cars uh, like mine. They said, hey, you know what? Why don't we just kind of start our own thing, you know? And we just said, oh, yeah, well, where do we meet? Ah, let's go by the Starbucks there at the, uh, the one located by the Burbank Airport. Mm -hmm. uh, not the Empire Center, the one right next to the airport by mm -hmm. the main entrance. So we say, this, this looks like a pretty good area to do it. And it was, you know, well lit. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, I didn't know that the, it had to be well lit throughout the hours of darkness due to it being next to an airport that kind of uses it. I guess in case of emergency, lights go out in the runway, they can use some of the city lights next to the airport to use it as, a, I guess, to light up the, run, the runway. Oh, okay. Mm. Oh, nice. So I didn't know this. So it was very well lit. Uh, it was only one way in, one way out. So I was like, this is perfect. So we, we originally started with four cars. You know, it was uh, Rick Mena, uh, Daniel and Kimberly, and then uh, my friend Jesse. Jesse Ortiz, who who's also known as the Jesse James the the picker. Oh yeah, and, you know he's also a barber. But uh, we all started with kind of like four cars, and then from there it just kind of exploded. And we said, hey, let's meet here every you know once a month. That only lasted like two weeks. How long ago? What what year was this? How this long is ago? back in January of 2012. Okay, oh, so nice. yeah, a little while then. So that's when it became official because, you know, obviously before that we were kind of tinkering around with, yeah, let's, let's meet here. And, you know, as, as odd as it sounds, we're, you know, we're meeting up uh, after nine, you know, after everybody kind of settles down on a Friday night and we just wanted to talk about cars and, you know, ideas and stuff, some of our builds. And so that's where it kind of exploded because then, you know, I say, hey, who are we going to invite? Oh, just, you know, let everybody else who has these type of cars flag them down, let them know here. I made some uh, quick business cards here, put this on the windshields and we just kind of handed them out. And then, uh, you know, like I said, we, we decided, hey, we're going to meet here once a month, but that only lasted like two weeks because, uh, you know, uh, the the second weekend, I'm getting phone calls. Hey, Frank, where are you at? What do you mean, where am I at? It's Friday. I was like, oh, I thought we said we were going to do this once a month. He goes, well, everybody's here, man. There's like 15 cars. Oh, let me get over there. So, so I drive over there and sure enough, 15 cars. And while I'm there, Ten more cars roll in. Next thing you know, we we're we're doing about maybe an average of thirty to forty cars every Friday yeah. night. Wow, that's mm -hmm. pretty good. So I was nice like, going. man, this is this is pretty good. Yeah. So we you know we continue to do that for you know uh, about seven years until uh, another local group started to meet there on Wednesdays, 
I'm not going to mention names, but <laughs> they, they kind of ruined it for everybody yeah. because there was, you know, more people started to chime in. They were like, there was these off-road guys that would meet there also on a, like on a Tuesday night. So they, they liked the location. And so, you know, and then these people were, would be uh, going there uh, maybe to order food from the Panda Express or some, of, there was a Greek restaurant there. I don't know if it's still there. Uh, there was a fish dish and, and the Starbucks, obviously. And they would come in there to, to, you know, to buy their food or even just wait for their ride right after they, they got off the plane. So they literally just walk, walk over there. And they, they would just stumble across it on, on Friday night and they see all these rare Japanese cars that, you know, you don't normally see on the, on the road. And they say, well, what are you guys doing here? Well, we, we meet here every, every Friday. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, how, where's the, is there a website? And nope, we don't, we don't want to advertise it. Mm -hmm. This is a private group. Uh, we do have a private group through Facebook, and and you have to kind of request get in, and mm -hmm. I, then my wife and I kind of, uh, you know, we monitor and we handpick and choose who who's really the exclusive uh, car person that has these type of cars who can be welcomed and yeah. no chrome right yeah. well yeah. No. you know it's, it's funny <laughs> the chrome not allowed <laughs> no chrome is allowed I mean, it's, but you know the my car that didn't have chrome and still till this day doesn't have chrome is is an 80s car right. yeah it's a 1985 toyota celica yeah so they didn't come with any which chrome is bumpers. kind of lame that somebody would say that because there's plenty of um, yeah. old hot rods that don't have chrome totally. you know but whatever um, but you, i remember the first time helm brought me over to your meet years ago mm -hmm. and uh you said something to me and i think our listeners need to know this too because you told me the definition of a classic car what what's vintage and what's classic and i think most people to be honest with you i don't think pe most people know I, I honestly i didn't really know what that specifically meant until you told me that years ago so what if you can t define what is classic what is vintage so people un have an understanding of what this actually means yeah well for the record I mean, I understand it may be my opinion, but in 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 the car world, uh, most car enthusiasts would agree with me. You know, including even Jay Leno, because you know any any type of car that's 25 years or older is considered a classic. Mm -hmm. You know, and then any anything over 50 years is considered uh, like you know a vintage, mm -hmm. and then 75 years an antique and so forth. Yeah. So I mean that's kind of how I break it down to people because oh well I, I don't I don't even know I don't I don't have a classic I go no you do yeah. your car is over <laughs> twenty five years old it's considered a classic yeah you know and there are insurance companies that will insure your classic and obviously that's one of their criteria has to meet a certain yeah you know, it has to be on their roster for it to be considered okay yeah this is a classic and it is a collectible yeah I'm not saying that a Prius wouldn't be but you know. Uh, for mm -hmm. insurance purposes, they were like, "Yeah, Prius, that weren't we yeah. insurance, <laughs> yeah. you know, not necessarily." <laughs> yeah. But that's well, most guys can't figure it out because they can't do math. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's another <laughs> thing too. <laughs> I, 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 or is an antique? I know that, they, that's another thing too. When people would be like, "Hey, Frank, well, uh, my my car's a, a it's a 1999, but it came out the first model came out in '95. Is, is mine not a classic? Oh, well, you know what? I can't. I couldn't do the math. So I go, you know what? We'll just we'll just cut it even. <laughs> 20, 20 years. We'll, we'll set it at twenty. Yeah, the yeah, twenty-year yeah, mark. Yeah, twenty-year yeah. mark. But see, that but that's a stipulation to come to me because I've brought friends that thought they could bring their like you know two thousand six S two thousand or two, whatever, yeah. and you're like, no, 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 it's not old enough yet. And right. you know, you're pretty strict with that. You know. Cause yeah. Well, I wouldn't say strict. It would just every everybody's welcome to come, and yeah, yeah. you know, I always uh, encourage people. Hey, you. you you know somebody that would like this, bring them, bring them along. Yeah. And I, I just always make it a point to say if they have a car that's newer than this, you know, they need to park on the outskirts. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. yeah. we want the attention for these cars. I mean, wh why do I want, uh, I mean, not that I don't like them. Yeah. Like, let's say, for example, uh, an STI. Yeah. Psh, those cars are badass. So, I'd like, <laughs> yeah, but they're going to be the center of attention. And maybe maybe they, they will be, maybe they won't. Because at that point, you know, people are like, What's this car doing here? Yeah, you know, which brings you know, kind of like when Helm, <laughs> when Helm first yeah. came. I don't know how he heard about the meet or whatever, but I remember he just drives in like he owns the the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then my, uh, which which car, Mike? My, my classic. It was your, diesel. your 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 diesel yeah, Mercedes, yeah. you know, twenty three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's driving, <laughs> and, and I'm watching. I'm thinking, what's this guy doing? <laughs> <laughs> so he pulls in, and he, and then everybody kind of does the same thing. They back into the parking, so so he exposed all the grills, and people pop their hoods and stuff. So he's backing in. I was like, this nice, this guy's not parking there. <laughs> so I, I let him park, and then I go and I walk up to him. And one of the first words I had with him was like, 
Hey, dude, you got the wrong meat. Because <laughs> it's like you're surrounded by Japanese yeah, yeah. classics, and he's looking around like, huh? <laughs> you know, and, and his was the only, you know, German, German. car. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I liked his attitude, and he kind of... And know, you felt sorry for him. <laughs> yeah. He has no friends. <laughs> no, but but uh, but I definitely took heed of, of, of the rules in place, meaning that you're curating, you curate it really nicely to the so that when people come in, it's an experience, you know? Yeah. And and I definitely respect it, even though you let me, uh, you grandfathered me in to park wherever I wanted, I yeah. still, you know, you know, uh, took the outskirts. But, um, yeah, I enjoyed it meeting a lot of different people yeah. at, at that meet. Yeah. Now, when, and, when Mercedes Benzes don't show up, what kind of Japanese cars do show up? <laughs> what do you guys <laughs> get at the meet? I mean, everything ranging from, I think the oldest we've had is a, like a 1960s uh, Subaru 360, Ooh. which is, you know, it comes with suicide doors. Oh. Um, you know, it, yeah. it's, it's one of those cars that, you know, you don't normally see. It's, it's, it's considered a K car. Mm -hmm. Kick cars are like a mini mini car, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, they you know anything from that old all the way to the newest like like an R thirty four for example, yeah. Nissan Skyline, which which now are more common than than yeah. most you know most uh, imports. And K car just for folks watching, it's not to be confused with the Dodge K car from Lee Iacocca's day. <laughs> Completely different automobile. Yes, right. they, they were more like uh, uh, like maybe dwarf style yeah. cars yeah, that yeah. were made for obviously in Japan. They they it's want like yeah. little everything's yeah. compact. So now, yeah. And we've got a picture of one. You said actually came with like a little motorcycle in the back. Yes, actually, as a matter of fact, that's the uh, the Honda City, which is uh, uh it's considered a K car. That one in particular is is owned by one of our members, who's also oh. a, a Hot Wheels designer, oh. uh, Matt, like Matt Gabe. Let's yeah. uh, let's look at some of the pictures. I think yeah. that would be kind of cool. Yeah. To there it is, right there. Yeah. There it is. Look yeah. at that. Yeah, if you notice, this one here is a right-hand drive, obviously, and um, and this one in particular is a cabriolet, which w they were limited, and they were only obviously these cars were only available for the Japanese market. And the motorcycle went in the back of that. Yes, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. It had to be a fold up, right? Moto, is that what you said? compact. I love the fender flares. I'm not sure if that's yeah, how you say it, but the the little motorcycle uh, would go in the back. Right behind the back seat or in the in the luggage area. And it's so cool. This one in particular was a cabriolet that was uh, custom. You know, uh, limited amounts were made in Japan, so obviously they eliminated the motorcycle so they could uh, you know stow away the the uh, the rag top. Mm. Is that the original um, graphic too with the little palm tree? Yes, I believe so. Oh, I mean, it, cool. uh, I know Matt Gabe, I wish he was here. He could maybe elaborate more on that, but he's the one that had that car imported. Mm. That's amazing. Yeah, you just don't see those around. Let's no. see what other cars you got uh, here. There yeah. we go. This one here is a Toyota Corona. Uh, uh, actually, this car was, was given to me. It was gifted to me, and uh, I owned it for a few hours because I, at the time I didn't have the space to keep it, and I was at work, and I was like, hey, Frank, you're going to come pick up this car or what? <laughs> it's it's going to get towed if you, if you don't pick it up. And I'm like, well, what, hold on, let me make some phone calls. So I called a buddy of mine, you know. Uh, Dennis, actually, Dennis uh, Aquino, he, he's the one that ended up acquiring it. Oh, nice. He's like, hey, well, Frank, well, how much you want for it? I go, nothing. Just go and pick it up. He goes, oh, what do you mean? Like, oh, what do they want wow. for it? No. Zero. Get a tow truck within the next hour or so. Wow. Get it. And he, he did. They, they couldn't start the car, so they mm. I guess they lost interest in it. It sat mm. for a while. It looked like it's in good shape. Nice paint. It was, and it, and it, and it landed at, at the, in the right hands because I guess, uh, you know, I, these cars were very common in the Philippines. And, mm -hmm. and Dennis Aquino, he's Filipino, so he... He he has a, I guess, a, a passion for these cars. Oh, nice. Mm. He's one of the very few shops left, you know, that actually work on these older cars, uh, Japanese classics. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. And they have a passion for what it. What shop it's, is that? Uh, Den's Mechanic. He's out in uh, in uh, uh, Baldwin Park area. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Cool. Cool. Now let's see what uh, what other cars we got here. Okay. Uh, I'd imagine you guys get a car when that you've never seen before just shows up out of the blue and you're like, whoa, yeah, occasionally, that. occasionally that does happen. Kind of like when Matt Gabe brought that, that, that little, uh, Honda city camera. Oh, yeah. That was, uh, obviously we've, no one's ever seen one around here. Oh yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. And uh, I had one of these, I had a 95 Acura Integra GSR. Love that car. Yeah. Four door. It was a four door. Annual. And I, and you, you know, the story behind the four door. I wanted a two door, except I knew I was going to get married. Yeah. Beth and I were going to get married and I had ordered it. It took me six months to get the car. I had a special order. It shows up. Beth sees it, and she's like, 
but you were going to get two doors. And I said, well, I got four so we could put the baby in the back seat. See, home. <gasps> oh, you don't, my God, that's so romantic. <laughs> you don't need to get a four-door car. You already have a four-door, so eventually oh, you meet a girl, get married, <laughs> yeah. have children. Yeah. He's single, by the way. And, and ladies. And ladies. And I, I, I yeah. call those uh, long roofs. But oh, yeah. also, if you really look at it, it it's a steroid-free SUV. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, I like that. Description. It's not lifted, and it yeah, doesn't exactly. have big wheels. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like uh, that description. I love it. But the Integra was a amazing. That, that's a Frank, would you say wheel. real quick? I don't want to get sidetracked here, but would you say station wagons are making a resurgence? I believe so, that because you know that uh, there's always the car company that comes up with something like that, even like Porsche. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. they don't call it a wagon, yeah. but it, that's initially what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and uh, I, I have a soft spot for those cars because you know, at one point or another, my dad made a lot of memories in his. He had a 1974 oh, okay. Country Squire. Oh, <laughs> that's nice. what we had. We yeah. had a 72. Oh, wow. Yeah. So he had that, and uh, you know, I was sure a little bit of my childhood but uh i lived out of that car you know i was homeless so you know oh, a, a wow. lot of memories with my dad in that car oh, so wow. Wow. the 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 long roof was was it because you know i i would put my bike up there my dad would put his bike and it was just like out of the way mm. so i was like we had this long roof to store stuff on yeah. top of it and then you know he, he had the the luggage rack on the on the on the station wagon and so we put a bunch of stuff up there that's so that's why i always I always said yeah this roof is so long that's why i just kind of stuck with it I feel long beth, yeah. beth was right if uh, she's like the, the 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 wagon is more intimate and yeah. personal to people yeah because you don't really hear a lot of people talking about like my, my dad's suv that we oh yeah right. you know it's just an suv yeah it's, yeah, it's, it's like a, a utility yeah we don't have any emotions to yeah. it uh, but a station wagon we, I mean, Different we ball. all have yeah, stories story. about station wagons. There's a story wagons. hidden, yeah. and I know we're gonna have another story uh, with your with your kids on a station wagon we're coming up soon. But you know, you're right; it it tra transcends every generation. Yeah. You know, station yeah. wagon. So yeah. Do you find that many women go to your meet? Uh, not not necessarily many, but there are the occasional uh, girl that you know just bought her you know let's say a two forty. You know, S13, she's building it or whatever, or uh, a little pickup truck. Uh, but for the most part, the women that do come, uh, usually the girlfriends or the or the wives of the, of the guys, because they, they also want to check out what's this whole thing about media at a, at a parking just to talk about cars, you know, because yeah. it's kind of odd, you know. But it keeps people or it keeps us guys out of trouble, you know. We're not out mm -hmm. at the bar drinking or you know, the nudie bar or something like that, but, <laughs> you know, but, uh, so, so sometimes, yeah, women come just to check it out. Maybe first couple of times and they're like, yeah, that's your thing. Go ahead. But, uh, there are stamp some, of approval on it. Right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> but there are some that are really into the car scene, you know, they, they rent on their own cars and they, they, they're not, they're not trying to make it known. They just want to kind of fit in and be part of it too. And, and, uh, for the most part, the, the ones that do come sometimes don't necessarily, have the the japanese classic like for example uh, natasha natasha adams she's been coming to our meet ever since we were you know when when helm started coming and her and uh she was more into the volvo wagons mm. so that was another one too that would give a hard time I was like, what are you doing here this is not your meet. But she, <laughs> she respectfully would park on the outskirts you know and, and she'd check out the cars and stuff and then finally one day she she showed up to me frank guess what i go what I finally got myself a Japanese classic. And I was like, okay, what'd you get? It's an LS400, Lexus LS400. Oh, no. You know, it's a typical luxury uh, four-door sedan. And uh, it, the, the things she did with that was just crazy because no one ever imagined what she was going to do. She she made it into like a pre-runner style off-road <laughs> uh, luxury vehicle. Mm -hmm. And this is not a pickup truck or an SUV. This is a, a luxury sedan. She lifted it. She put on some, you know, 30, 30 inch or 33 inch. I don't remember what size mm -hmm. tires at the time, but she, she kind of went overboard because she was like, I want to do things my way. I like this. And, and then she took off with it. 
She so, lived somewhere that has no driveway, so she had to put on those big knobbies and yeah, or she, or she, <laughs> yeah, yeah, or she was gonna yeah. do the car. With yeah, her. maybe that's <laughs> it. Yeah, so 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 all of a sudden now she she could come to the meet like feel more welcome. Like, hey, I got my LS four hundred. So that obviously motivated other girls to start coming and oh, and you know every every Friday there's a, there's a there's always a variety of of people that come. You know, boys or girls that you know drive a certain car. So you're never going to always see the same cars all the time. Yeah, there's a, s- a small group of circle that, you know, always show up. But that's the cool thing about it, too. So when, when she started to come and uh, she's she was like, she had some some ideas. She said, hey, since since you and your boys and, you know, your family are into the graphics and all that, I kind of want to have like something, like some livery done on my car. Can you guys do it? And I said, well, what do you want? She said, well, I, I kind of have some ideas. Okay, put it on paper, and you know we'll go from there. So she did a printout of her of a photo of her car. I think in black and white, if I can remember. And then obviously she went the old traditional, you know, with a marker and crayons or whatever, colored pencils. Uh, coming up with a with a simple livery design. And then when she showed it to me, I go absolutely when you want to come over so had her come over to our house and in our when we we made it happen in our driveway that was the thing it was at night you know it was kind of like kind of like having our own little meet at, at my residence <laughs> so uh once we wrapped the car you know using spotlights using you know heat gun make sure it lays well without leaving any air bubbles and once once it once it was completed we're like now we got to go do our little photo shoot right now so we went over to the Ikea in Burbank. Mind you, the parking lot is perfectly lit. And it's, it's obviously an underground parking. And we went there. That was the first place we did the photo shoots. And those photos, when she uploaded them onto Instagram, her Instagram account, like, literally overnight became, like, viral. Wow. Just because of the attention she got from this car. Not just because it was lifted, but the livery that it had on it, it was just like, it just screamed Toyota all over. <laughs> yeah. You know, using the, the Toyota uh, colors, you know, the original racing colors. Yeah, that's Yellow, cool. orange, and red. So that was a big hit for her. And then eventually she became uh, like a total Instagram famous. Wow. You know, she has a little blue check mark or whatever. But <laughs> hey, <laughs> that, that's awesome that she, she she's still very humble and modest and, you know, she'll occasionally she'll send me a message hey how you doing what's up i'm in town maybe what we can meet and gra- grab a cup or a bite to eat and that's that's awesome you yeah. know because usually when people become famous they they forget yeah. about you that's cool i mean just obviously in a male dominated kind of like culture or whatever you see a woman kind of do her thing but do what she wants um it'd be interesting i wish beth, beth was here or met her because i'm sure she yeah. has some interesting things to ask yeah her. so, so might when, inspire beth yeah yeah maybe we'll have her on if she'll come on our show <laughs> yeah, yeah I'll, I'll tell her about it uh if you guys want to follow her uh, it's natasha adams i think we do i think okay we do nice. but nice. so the one of the one of the things that you know she said well how much do i owe you for this i go you don't owe me anything i'm, I'm gonna be i'm gonna sponsor it for you so i'm i'm I would say I, I'm her first sponsor for for that yeah, for that sure. car, and one of the things I, I made it clear to her: as long as you rock uh, our sticker of the OJCM uh, as part of your livery, so she does. She still till this day she still has it. And she even had my myself and Sebastian sign it because That's she cool. wanted us to sign it because we one because you know uh, I helped start OJCM. And then Sebastian designed the OJC yeah. Yeah, yeah. logo, so she wanted both of our signatures. So our signatures wow. are on her on her sticker. That's cool. Which is about eight inches in, in diameter, yeah. and it and it's on the hood of her car, and it's also on the backside. So we, you know, yeah. strategically placed it too. Yeah. So you know, any photos or whatever. But uh, that is one of the things that she she you know she still till this day endorses us, and she I, I'm sure she still has uh, a soft spot of of our meet because mm. whenever she's in town or she's in the area or she's not busy doing interviews or photo shoots or whatever she'll you know she'll come out to the meet once once in a while that's cool and yeah. bring bring the ls400 that started it all yeah. that's shout cool. out to natasha thank you too for coming to me uh for me to print um your guys's hardline uh, lady shirts too yeah so the hardline <laughs> ladies uh, now that you brought that up too so the, she actually started the, the that hardline ladies 
Hardline, obviously, in the off-road world, is basically the hardest trail or the the trek that you're going to be off-roading on. So the Hardline ladies is specific to just the ladies. So these girls go out on their rigs. It could be anything. Mm -hmm. It could be a Ford. It could be a Chevy, a Jeep. Uh, in her case, the Lexus, or her her uh, her uh, her other vehicle, which is a, a Comanche pickup. Um, they they'll go out on these trails and they pick the hard lines and but they'll go out just with no guys just ladies and mm. they'll they'll either they get stuck or whatever that that happens it's just the girls mm. that's cool. And, that's and, cool. and that's what's cool about it because you know it encourages more women to get into that sport Absolutely. Yeah. You know? yeah yeah that's awesome it's and it's cool. fun to see uh, the the old Japanese cars, the the little wagons. Yeah, like you, the five you see those around. Oh, the five ten yeah. wagon. Yeah, yeah. I think we had one up there yeah. earlier, the yellow or mustard color one. Yeah, uh, the Toyota Cressida wagons. The Cressidas, amazing. and you know, obviously, you know, they all had kind of like a uh, every 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 make had had their wagons too, like yeah. mm -hmm. the Mazda rotary wagons too. Yeah. But wow. Um, any uh, what's do we have any other picks of some? Of the, there we go. There's a nice one right there. Yeah, there's a pickup. Datsun 620 pickup. Now, you said there's a great story behind this one. You were telling us just before we started taping about this and the Hot Wheels? Yeah, actually, uh, when uh, during the, before, or actually around the same time as the pandemic, you know, 2020, they were quarantined, and, and uh, that uh, that particular pickup belongs to one of the members. Uh, he, Abel Vaca is his name. He, he, he's one of the original ones that started coming to the meet. And uh, one day, you know, while I was trying to figure out something for him to do at home, rather than just play video games, you know, I was in entertaining them and introducing them to the Hot Wheels, uh, you know, customizing. So we're like, hey, you know, uh, Abel came up to me and says, hey, you guys, you guys do Hot Wheels? And we're like, yeah, we do them. And, and he's like, can you guys do my pickup? Because at that time, I think... Uh, it was becoming more common that Hot Wheels came up with the casting, and you know, oh, yeah. you'd see it at the peg, you know, at pegs at the store, and and we picked up a couple, and he's like, yeah, I'd, I'd like to get the the same pickup uh, that they made into mine, you know, I want it to be look looking like mine, so the same wheels. He had, I believe, their center lines, uh, deep dish, ten inch, and so we're like, okay, we're, we're now we're gonna go to the hot wheel swap me and look for the wheels and oh, no. so it becomes a this thing it's like almost like you going looking for sourcing out parts for your own vehicle yeah put in miniature mm. wow. but this is more of a, a more i guess more involved because yeah. now i'm i'm including my boys to come and help me they, you know i show them how to uh drill out the rivet you know using a pilot hole uh drilling into it uh, and eventually grinding off the the lip of the rivet so you could take the the car apart, mm -hmm. and then you put it back together by using a tapping drill, and uh, buying the you know the the micro screws to put mm -hmm. it all back together. So once you you break it apart, you know you get the interior, you get the windshield, and the the chassis with the wheels, and you can pop off the wheels, the axles and stuff, and it, that, it's a whole process. But you can also uh, customize the interior you know some people want to paint the seeds <laughs> or the make it just look or, like yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. so that's exactly what we did with this it was in miniature and it's so difficult because you're you're working with your hands and it's and it's miniature rather than it being big big yeah. enough so you can, yeah you can mask things off so you, right here you're trying to mask off uh, the rest of the interior because you you only have to paint the dash a certain color of that the real amazing. truck so yeah and then and with that truck uh it had a, obviously a patina that Abel actually left it that way. He put a clear over it oh, nice. to want to, to preserve the patina look. So it had a, you know a bunch of uh, uh, you know uh, rust spots here and there, and he wanted it to look like that. So he's like, I want the the the, the casting or the custom Hot Wheels to look exactly. as close as possible. Mm. That's crazy. And so, I see that he uh, rolled the fenders in in that photo. Did you guys roll the fender too in the No, uh, okay. fortunately uh Hot Wheels uh you know, you Wide can't enough. really see the the detail. Oh, okay. Yeah. But the fenders are, you know, kind of oversized. So, oversized. And, and then with cool. the wheels, you know, we tuck them in, we make make it look like like you know, like the way it looks in that real life in miniature. So, you know, obviously when we presented it, he's like, "Well, how much do I owe you?" Well, you know, I don't I don't know, you know give us a, or give them 
because they were the ones that worked on it. I just kind of guided them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? So I'm gonna, we'll have you introduce. You want to introduce your boys real fast? Yes. Yeah. Uh, my boys to my left is uh, Sebastian De Jesus and Dorian, my youngest. Hello. So we're going to talk about the Hot Wheels here in a second, though. Um, I, have a, I have a trivia question for you guys. Are you ready? Gabe's, Gabe's giving me that look. Uh-oh. He gives Wait. me this look several times <laughs> during the show. Wait, same look I get home time. Trivia, yeah. I have a trivia question. You have a trivia. You still owe me five dollars from the station wagon question too. Oh, yeah, okay. so there's an interest. In <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. I do owe you five bucks. Hell, I forgot about that five dollars. <laughs> Wait, when you owe Hell money, <laughs> he's gonna bring a strong arm, and get his money out of it. He needs that money to go buy more yeah. Hot Wheels. Yeah. Yes. All right. So here's my trivia question. Anybody jump in? I'm I'm going to ask the question and see if anybody knows the answer. Gabe, just give me that look. (laughs) Here we go. Question. What was the name of the very first Mazda car model sold with a rotary engine? Hmm. Hmm. Any guesses? Gabe's wearing a seven stock hat. It's just a hat. It doesn't make you smarter. (laughs) (laughs) You mean uh, Gabe's a rotary head right here. A real production? (laughs) What's that? Oh, it's a real production. Real production oh. car. First one. And here's, a, I'll give you a clue. It it doesn't necessarily have to be from the U.S. or sold in the U.S. Oh, okay. Could well, include Japan. I'm sure, it, yeah, I'm sure it was a Japan one. Uh, I'm, I'm sure this is not the right answer, but I was just going to say Cosmo, but. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. You know. Mazda Cosmo. Yeah. But right. what the hell do I know? All right. Well, we actually have an expert. I brought in an expert. You did. Oh, oh, Helm really looks scary. <laughs> <laughs> right. So let's let's hear what the expert has to say. All right. So David Neal, executive director at the Murphy Auto Museum in Oxnard, California, and automotive historian. What is the answer? Hi, CJ. Uh, the answer is the 1967 Mazda Cosmo. This was the first uh, car that Mazda made uh, for the masses. It was actually a prototype car that uh, debuted at the 1964 uh, Tokyo Motor Show. Most of them actually stayed within Japan. Very few ever made it out of Japan. Uh, They're pretty rare today. Incidentally, I used to live in in Japan, and what always impressed upon me when I was there, and I've been back since, is the car models they have over there that we have over here, but they call them something different. For example, over here, the famous uh, 240, 260, and 280Z uh, over there, it's called the Nissan Fair Lady, uh, and there's lots of examples of this. So there you go. There's the answer, and there's a little, uh, there's a few factoids about uh, Japanese cars. All right, perfect. Thank you, David. Some of the other auto- Japanese automakers uh, here, they had different names for their U.S. and Japanese models. For example, the Nissan Maxima in the U.S. is the Maxima in Japan. It's the Bluebird. You guys know yeah. that? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Bluebird. Yeah. Oh, All right. Know that. The Pathfinder in the U.S. is the Toronto in Japan. Mm. The Sentra in the U.S. is the Sunny in mm-hmm. Japan. Oh, dang. The Mazda 2 in the U.S. is the Demio in Japan. Hmm. And the Nissan Fit in the U.S. is the Honda Hepburn. Wow. Hepburn as in Catherine? As in Catherine Hepburn. I learned something really? new today. Yes. And this one's for Gabe. What was the RX-7 in Japan? Savannah. Yeah. Oh. Hey. I'm not prepared. I'm not prepared for this. Um, nice. So this this expert, he didn't Google this while you were talking to him, right? I bet. I hope he wasn't. (laughs) (laughs) But when you, uh, you'll see it. Um, Yeah, it's it's crazy though because the Cosmo um, is probably like the most like expensive or rarest uh, mods, obviously because it's old. But it's such a cool car. Well, if you think about it, in the '60s, isn't that when Japan? Started coming over for the first time. Yeah, but the Cosmo they never brought over here. It was just Japan. Yeah, yeah it was just Japan. Oh, okay. yeah. And yeah. The, the the lines kind of followed. Uh, to me, in my opinion, it kind of followed like the Ford Thunderbird. Thunderbird, yeah. Like, oh, kinda, yeah. It was like a oh, mini version. Got, of it. Totally, got it. totally. Because if you look at it, I was like, what? wait a minute. So they found inspiration from each other, from, like you know, with. The, I would say. So. I mean, I oh, yeah. a lot of designers did that. Yeah, you yeah. know. Um, but it's funny too because. Um, Cosmo, I tried to get into Mike Malibu's one at Seven Stock, and man, I don't, I don't, I'm not getting in that car. You know, a Thunderbird I could fit in barely, but you could get in it. I, I, yeah, yeah, but, but you like if Jay Leno could get in his, I mean, I don't, I don't like to be uncomfortable in my car. I mean, <laughs> uh, 
could I get in it? Yes. Could I go around driving comfortably? Probably. Probably like right. me and a Miata. Dude, picture that. <laughs> it's like top, a circus top bear. Top circus down. bear, you know. <laughs> so. Yeah, that was a good trivia question, no, though, I wasn't like it? That. I like that. That was a good one. But what's, what's interesting as well is just the different names from the U.S. to the um, yeah. the Japan market, too. Like, how they come up with those names, yeah. I would love to know. And know, then, to this day, it still happens, you know, like the Lexus LS400. Yeah. In Japan, is the Celsius. Oh, yeah. And there's got to be some it's kind of Toyota philosophy. Celsius, not Lexus. Yeah, Toyota yeah. Celsius. Oh, see. Okay. No, but there's got to be some kind of philosophy on why they think they need to need to name the US version differently than the yeah. Japanese and vice versa. Yeah. Do we know why or what year the Cosmo came out? What what year is that? CJ? 67. 67. 67. 67. Yeah. 67. Oh, okay, cuz you know, Kramer on Seinfeld, Cosmo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I thought it could be an 80s thing. Mm. No. Wow, Dan, <laughs> with the Seinfeld. Yeah, I know. That's the second time, by the way. <laughs> I'm counting these ones. It's Seinfeld, Seinfeld man. Uh -huh. Sorry, I love Seinfeld. What can yeah. I okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Dan, the Seinfeld guy. I got it. All right, let's talk about the Hot Wheels. This is yeah. pretty exciting what you guys are up to. How did this whole thing start? Well, well it, you know what? It, it kind of started, you know, as... As my boys were growing up, you know, they've always had Hot Wheels around, you know, because yeah. I, I grew up with Hot Wheels and Matchbox. So uh, when they were getting old enough to stay up that late for the car meet, you know, they would, you know, I would bring them along with me to be at the car meet. And then they would always have their Hot Wheels with them and they'd play around or whatever. And then at one point they're like, Dad, can we display the cars at the car show? And I'm thinking, yeah, why not? I mean, it's, it, it's car related. Why not? So... I had a, at the time I had a, uh, a hood bra on my Celica and you know, the, the slope on the hood, it, if you put a car, it's not going to stay. So we use the, the hood bra to kind of act as a, as a little barrier. So Sebastian started to line up all his cars that he brought <laughs> on the hood of my <laughs> so car. Cool. And that got so much attention from everybody. Cause they were like, Oh, what are you guys selling? No, they're not for sale. They're my son's. He's just displaying them, just kind of like the real car meet here. He's but got his own meat his within own the meat. Car meet. And I was, oh, man, I, I had one. Of, how much you want? I'll give you 20 bucks for that. And they're like, no, no, they're, they're not for sale. <laughs> but the, the attention it got was like just, it was more than the real cars. Wow. Because let's be honest, who doesn't like miniatures? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves miniatures. Exactly. I don't care how old you are or what you're into. If, if it's miniature, everybody's intrigued by that. So... So I think that that's what kind of got the attention uh, of people. And then as they got older, obviously, we, you know, we started to, you know, I remember Sebastian, he would get a hold of the masking tape. And we had, you know, our, at the time at home, we had uh, laminate floors and he would make the road out of masking tape. And then line up the cars, and like I'd come home, and it's like the whole floor is like <laughs> that is so it's like a road, you know, <laughs> all these roads. And then and then initially he started to it's like you know bring more of his collection to the to the car show or or to the meet, even to different car shows. And then uh, one of our friends who uh, who who had a, a track a track set. It's a six lane super lane uh, super six lane tracks it that uh mattel sells from for hot wheels it, it comes in a like an eight foot setup mm -hmm. obviously it's it's designed you know for most of us that grew up with hot wheels we would set these things up in our living room mm. or our bedroom and then mom said hey you gotta pick it all up and we'd break it down they were designed to be broken down and yeah. stash them under your bed or whatever so uh when barry uh uh introduced them to this this track set he was setting up at the at the local. Uh, there was a park, or there is still is a park. We we actually uh, are part of that too. Uh, it's a diecast swap meet or Hot Wheel swap meet. Is that Pasadena? Yeah, it's in South, South Pasadena. Pasadena. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. and Barry started setting the, the the track up, and he would have these little races, and and uh, you know we just my boys were like in heaven because they were like you know well now yeah. we get to race the cars and. So how how old were you guys at this point? Uh, this was like twenty twenty. No, even okay. yeah, it was around that time. That, so that, you were. That, that's when we started going to the swap meet. We started going in 2020. Yeah, so I, I started to get more involved because you know I wanted to to start to customize. And at the swap meet, you find all kinds of stuff. You know, you find little miniature roof racks and mm -hmm. all the accessories, uh, wings and you know fenders and bumpers and all, and wheels of all types, tires. So that's when they got kind of got exposed to the this track, this track set, and mind you. Uh, 
Barry, he 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 has a setup at home. Obviously, he like uh, some of the YouTubers <clears throat> that do that. Uh, so we started kind of chiming into that. It's like, yeah, this is cool, you know. Mm -hmm. And Barry's setup was very simple. He had, you know, just some tables, whatever he could fit in his in his car at the time, and uh, obviously with some uh, wooden boards to kind of bridge over some of the tables. And and this track was maybe about thirty feet long. Mm -hmm. And but there was really no uh, no sense of uh, like a, an official race. We were just like, yeah, let's race. All right, let's. Everybody's just kind of free for all, like line them up and race so then uh, uh during that that time during the pandemic uh i had asked barry hey barry um uh where'd you get this and he was like oh I, you know i've had it and and i started looking online and nowhere could i find one these things were not being really? sold and i think hmm. they developed they made them back in 2003 uh <clears throat> and then they obviously re-released them or whatever yeah. but but we couldn't find them i couldn't find them online and i was like and, and i wanted them to kind of get into it more so uh, I asked Barry, "Hey Barry, uh, on your on your time that you're not at the park, can I borrow this track so my sons, you know, can uh, tinker with it at home?" He said, "Yeah, man, no problem. Here, he, he let me borrow it." During this time, I'm I'm searching every day. I'm like going on trying to find your own, right? Find it on Amazon, yeah. nothing. And then, sure enough, one, uh, by by chance, there was uh, some a damaged box that somebody was selling on eBay. And it was brand new, but it was the, the the box was damaged. So I was like, I don't care. I, I think I paid over one hundred twenty dollars for it. Uh -huh. Shipped. So then uh, that Christmas, um, my wife and I surprised them with it, and we're like, Hey, we're gonna give the track back to Barry, and they're like, Oh, okay. They're kind of bummed out. <laughs> I was like, But ta da! <laughs> <laughs> so then yeah. from that point on, you know, um, they started setting it up, and then next, you know, they're like, uh, Dad, can we start taking the the track to the meet? I'm like, How are you gonna do that? I mean. You know, pe people are gonna trip over it. It's like no, dad, we put it on tables like Barry. And like okay, so here I am trying <laughs> to figure out which is the best practical table to so I could fit it in my hatchback, <laughs> and not just one table. It has to be at least three. Oh wow! So it kind of went from there. So three tables, and then um, that was uh, to scale. It was an eighth of a mile, but it was just too short. Yeah, and then yeah. It, and then it grew to a quarter mile. So we're we're we you know they kind of set it all up. So it, so it was a quarter mile to 164 scale. Mm. So they had to do some math, figure out the the, the footage, and now we're doing math wow. again. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I'm curious. What, what, on Christmas morning, when you guys saw this, yeah. what, what were you guys? So, what were you guys thinking? That so, must have been fun. So uh, so uh, what do you call it? We we we, we our our friend Barry. He 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 brought us the track, uh, and and uh, we 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 were holding on to it from like November to December. And then uh, in in that time, one of our friends, by the way, shout out to uh, Haraga Bells and Vaughn. He he was he was uh, hosting his own car show, and and he he thought we brought the track, so he he wanted us to to go over there. So we were all like, "Oh, hey, Barry, could we tinker with the track and and borrow it for the show?" And th and then he was all like, "Sure, yeah, you can hold on to it." So so then after we take it to after we take it to Harag's me, we 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 think um, I'm over here thinking I'm like. Why don't we do this at all the other car shows? Let's take the track to all sorts of places and yeah. have everyone race. So, so then, so then, uh, we 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 began to we we began to do that, and then we were starting to come up with a logo and like figure out a more efficient mm -hmm. way to do it with more tables and everything, and and how to fit it in the back of the Celica, and then. Uh, but 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 then uh he, he he ended up asking for for he ended up asking for it back not knowing we were doing this so we were like uh oh <laughs> and then and then on christmas morning we opened the we opened the track and i'm like oh okay perfect <laughs> you know, so, so relieved perfect timing, you know? yeah, so, yeah. So, it back so relieved. Very, and then all yeah. of a sudden now yeah. we have our own oh, yeah yeah, wow. yeah so immediately so that same day we we started to you know add our own custom logo and by the way, the, this logo was uh, was designed uh, kind of like a spinoff of the Kenji style writing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, from the Toyota logo, the TEQ that some people oh, are familiar yeah, yeah. with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that actually spells out Toyota, which is also uh, part of the the design, which for OJCM for our car group. So the, the, going back to the car meet thing, this design was actually was was designed by by sebastian he was 12 years old when he designed wow, it. wow that nice. looks awesome which was kind of cool because um 
when the the car meet started to get bigger and stuff and we were like hey frank we need to come up with a with with a, a logo for our club i said wait wait time out this is not a club mm. this is a car meet yeah you know i don't want people to feel like they 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 can't be part of it because now it's a club you gotta get you know mm-hmm. initiated or whatever and i said <laughs> no this is just a group of enthusiasts and this is exclusive to the japanese classics yeah that's what kind of sets us apart yeah. it's not just like your t- typical uh car meet that you drive yeah. up and yeah. exactly. everybody's just free for all yeah so i you know i kind of everybody kind of like hey you know jesse danny and 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 even rick we kind of chimed in it was like hey frank we need to come up with something okay so i was like okay why you know why don't we just kind of everybody submit some ideas and uh during this time obviously sebastian was there i think he was 12 years old at the time and and he he kind of you know when we got home he's like hey dad i, I got an idea and i'm thinking like it better be good because if you're coming up with it, that means that yeah. it has to fit in and it has to kind of kind of uh, be better than anybody else's idea. Mm-hmm. So and, and sure enough, when the next time we, we met the next Friday, some people didn't really have any ideas. They were just kind of throwing out, oh, what if it, you know, we do this or it? we didn't really have like an official name. It was just kind of like, hey, what what is this thing called? I was like, you know what? It's old Japanese car meat. You know, it's a Bingo. car meet. And that, <laughs> Keep that's it simple, it, right? Yeah. JCM. So, yeah. wow, that, that's kind of cool. You know, and it, and it was the best way I could describe it to people. It was kind of like uh, in, inspired by uh, JCCS, oh, which is nice. a Japanese classic car show with uh, Koji and Terry uh, that started about, you know, 19 years ago or almost 20 years ago. But uh, they, you know, they, they host this show that started in Long Beach. Mm-hmm. It was basically that, the Japanese classic car show. Yeah. And this was kind of like a uh, inspired by that yeah. this car meet, because now we can have this every Friday. We don't have to wait a whole year. Yeah, and it's at <laughs> yeah. night. Yeah, and it's in a parking lot, and yeah. it's free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so that's kind of how it started. So when when Sebastian, you know, came home, he sketched out the OJCM because that was a, that was the acronym, Old Japanese Car Meet. And he made it in that same style writing, nice. you know. I mean, because we're Toyota guys, but I know, yes, we're yeah. biased because, you know, we're, oh, well, that's kind of like the Japanese look. Well, it, it is in general, but it was it was, uh, was kind of like a parody to the TEQ. Mm-hmm. Like it was that. the same style of yeah, writing. Like, you know? yeah. And that's that's where it kind of, you know, in, incorporated itself as, as our official it's, group logo. It's really nice. And then from there, uh, if you notice on our shirts, it says uh, HW Racing by ojcm because that's where it kind of started it, yeah it, it, it originated with my boys you know uh introducing the the die cast there you know mm-hmm. so that you know that's kind of like where where it went when when sebastian uh sketched out the the first as a matter of fact i still have the original artwork that's awesome he sketched it out and i was like i was like man he hit it right on the nail and what yeah. were you thinking when he when your dad said okay we're using this <laughs> i was i was kind of thinking well, you're only using it because I made it. That's what I. That's what That's what I first thought. But then I was like, well, you know what? I, I, nobody else really came up with anything. And yeah. well, yeah, because everybody was hyping it up. Like, man, we didn't come. Up. Okay, well, where, where is it? I, I didn't want to just take it upon myself and, and say I'm gonna design it. Yeah, right? yeah. And I, I actually opened it up. I go, well, give me your ideas. You know, I, you know, a lot of people knew that I would. Uh, my, my wife and I, we, our background is kind of we're, we're artists, we're craftsman artists, so we do all kinds of different things but one of the things we've done for the last 25 30 years is we we, we've designed logos for for people even famous uh you know music groups that i can't mention you know (laughs) but uh but those are some of the things that we kind of focus on you know make it simple usually it's a one or two color uh not to elaborate and those are the logos that kind of get embedded in people's minds Yeah. yeah You know, so and live. Yeah, so so that 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 was kind of like uh, you know something that I, I didn't want to take take that responsibility. So I kind of threw it out to the group. I says, hey, if you guys can come up with with some ideas, I can help you put it together, and we yeah. can do that. And Sebastian in the background, he's like listening to this, and then nice. that's when he mm. came home and sketched out that. Look, look what I got. I was like, 
Wow. Yeah, well, I and, and not a lot of people got to see this behind the scenes, but I know uh, your uh, creativeness and your illustration skills because I used to see a lot of the, the drawings that your dad would show me of what you would sketch, yeah. you know? So I knew you hit it in the park when I saw that. Um, Did you know that, that Frank put out to the group that they needed a logo? No. Okay. Because I'm, because oh, I, I think if he yeah. if he did it, oh, you didn't submit well, anything. Oh, I, well, I, well, I, I, you know I, what? I, I would have. He would have, and you would have if you would have been there. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. Hey, you got I would have, but he kicked me out. <laughs> I, I never See? kicked you. I, I, <laughs> no, I just you're, you're welcome. No, exactly. exactly. <laughs> but, so, uh, so let's talk about because that kind of went into the Hot Wheels. Yeah. 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 When did so, you guys get a, an idea that this thing was gonna take off? About uh, probably beginning of December of 2020. And what really? was it? Did just people coming up to you and when, when when we would go to the other shows, and then like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, like the the show at Bells and Vaughn, they have a toy drive at the end of the year. Oh yeah, uh, Rog has a car show and toy drive at the end of the year, and we brought the track. Uh, it was very simple at the time because we like we were just starting out, and uh, what we would do is we have the table with the racetrack, and then I would put up all my little Hot Wheels cars as like a, a car show right there. So it's like. The Hot Wheels car show at the big car show, and everyone was like, "Oh my God, that's so cool!" and everything. It was it was really very simple. I didn't I didn't have uh, very many cars, and I didn't put very many of them on the table because we only have three tables, and I didn't want them to roll off. But I had a few of them there. And, at, at, uh, at the time, yeah, we yeah. only had three tables. Yeah. How, <laughs> and many, then, how many tables do you have now? Uh, it's six tables. Six, ta oh, six, six tables. Six tables just for the track. Yeah, because wow. remember when the three tables, it, it, we we when we broke it down. And and actually scaled it down, it was approximately one eighth of a mile. Yeah. So we we mm. we actually uh, embraced that and said, "Yeah, this is our eighth our eighth of a mile track." Or do you want us to set up the quarter mile? Yeah, and they're like nice. everybody's nice. like, "Oh, quarter mile." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're, they're imagining it's a quarter mile. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, this is a quarter mile to, to scale. scale. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and what scale is that? One sixty four. And they're like trying to figure out more and, math. You know, more math. Like how long is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The. Uh, and then, uh, uh, what do you call it? We ended up debuting the quarter mile track like a year or two later at, uh, at a shout out to Patrick Strong as well at uh, his uh, Diecast Cars and Coffee. It's, we're going to have the next one at the end of February. Yeah, yeah the, Wait, the Diecast, diecast cars, cars and Coffee. coffee. That's yeah, it, so cool. it's, it's uh, basically it's a Cars and Coffee, but for Diecast. Wow. So uh, that's a, a lot Are the of, coffees lot. miniature too? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so a lot of the Diecast uh, community, whether you're a designer, a, a vendor, whatever it yeah. is, they all kind of meet there. And this is, this is held at the Automobile Driving Museum, which is now the Zimmerman. Oh. Down in El Segundo, which mm, is uh, okay. really neighbors to the Mattel headquarters. So that's when we decided, you know what, this is this is a perfect time to introduce our quarter mile track setup, you know, and and you know wow. when, when Patrick asked us to come, that was a treat because they're like, wow, we're gonna be able to bring the track, and we told him, hey, we're gonna debut a quarter mile track, and he's like, wow. So you know, we weren't sure if if we were gonna have enough room or not. Mm. You know, now our footprint it came it, it became uh, from a ten by 10 by 15 now it's a 10 by 30 wow you know because we don't just i mean the tables themselves each table is like a two by four and it uh two feet by four feet and it folds so i can be able to fit in in the back of my car mm -hmm. now we've moved up to other bigger vehicles because we have barriers and and it's it, we've added more stuff to the track now we have three, three tracks to you brought yeah. in fact, some footage right yeah i was about to say we've got some photos we got some videos of this just so you can Get a sense of just how big it's become, how many people show up, and and this is pretty impressive. You guys have to be yeah. pretty proud of yourselves and how you pulled this thing yeah. off. Yeah, well, it, you know what? It 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 it's cars. It has to do with cars. I mean, I don't care how old you are. It it brings people together. Mm. You know, totally. and, and that's when people would see their display and then and we, the 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 crowd they would bring when we were having the races, and and it's it's a live race. Yeah. It's basically uh, a, like a real live racetrack experience 
but in miniature. Mm-hmm. So people are getting into it too. Yeah, oh, they, they get into it. Absolutely. Do they bring their own car? And that's then, the idea. You they have bring to, it. Yeah. It's just just like we, when you we, when you go to the track and you're gonna race your car on the track. You're bringing your own car. You're not gonna bring yeah. Gabe's, right. and his doesn't even run anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know. So, but just, Ouch! <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's all. Like, yeah, I shouldn't be talking. Go. My my car is down right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> what was I'm thinking? Maybe some people show up, and if they don't bring a car, they could use one of yours, and that could be mm. theirs. No, yeah, it doesn't for the work race. That That's way. not. You got to run way. what you brung. Right? We we yeah. we actually uh, we do set up a couple of small tables when we hand select some of the cars that are yeah. that are uh, that are compatible with that track and the theme at the time. You know, if we're gonna go to a hot rod show or whatever, we'll bring some hot rods that that can actually uh, be compatible to that track setup. Mm. Oh, I see. So if if you know, we'll get, occasionally uh, we'll when we set up. Some sometimes people are like, oh, why? Well, I, 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 if I would have known, I would have brought my Hot Wheel. Well, here's some Hot Wheels. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't be cheap. Buy one. Yeah. Put it on the track and let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so, the, and then that started the momentum. That now we have returning champions, and these these are grown ass men that <laughs> they have their little cases and they have their collection. Really? They they know which cars depending on which track we set up. Because that's another thing that. Sometimes we don't reveal which track until like a day or two before. Mm. Oh wow! To kind of keep people on their toes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah sure. And this is also different than uh, most people. You know, there there's these big YouTubers that set up their track sets in their you know houses, uh, man caves, houses, garages. Those are permanent tracks. But those are more permanent. And oh, okay. ours, the the unique thing about ours is a pop up track. Yeah. yeah, we can take you it can anywhere, it. and you can change it. You know, we can bring it to a church. We can go. We do weddings. We we just got hit up uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, to they wanted to commission the boys for a funeral. Hmm. The the guy who passed away. I guess wow, he, 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 was, he, was a, he was a racer, race car driver, oh, wow. and he was a Hot Wheels guy. Oh, that's cool. Wow. And then his his son, an older guy, he, he hit me up. He goes, hey, do you guys do funerals? I'm like, mm, we've never done a funeral, but that, that would kind of be cool. Yeah. What a great way to honor. That's yeah. Cool. Yeah, and yeah. That's, yeah. And, that, and that's what he said. He goes, you know what? I, I like what your boys are doing. This kind of brings everybody together. And and I want that, and I think my dad would have want that. Wow, that's I was like, cool. okay. Well, here's our card, and give us a call. But you know, I, I guess he ended up uh, not going with it because he pitched the idea to the rest of the family. I think the sisters or his other siblings, and they, they didn't really have the vision for yeah. it. I, yeah. I wish they would have been there to see it. Yeah, they kind of shot it down. And said, Nah, well, you know what? We're not going to do it after all. Okay, so not a big deal. We, we've got a couple oh. clips if you guys want to see some clips of yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, we've got some yeah, stills. Yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, let's bring that up. Hang on just a sec. And, and you guys do announcing too, right? Oh, yeah. I, You're the announcer. So you can see, you could hear the crowd and yeah. also, also uh, the background music like that. I put together a playlist. They put a playlist of, of depending on the songs yeah. curated specifically for oh, that's cool for racing. Oh, wow. I, I have a playlist for like more muscle muscle car type racing. Yeah. Oh, that's what that's cool. what we use for the for our quarter mile drag strip. The one you see in the clip is actually our toge course, so it's more more geared. It's more technical because there's yeah. more corners and stuff. The muscle cars don't do very well on those yeah. corners. That's cool. Oh, no. That one that one's more geared towards a uh, like nine elevens and stuff. JDM <laughs> JDM <laughs> tuners J- JDM tuners Canyon cars. Uh, more nibble Can- type cars. canyon carvers basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah we uh, we uh, first debuted that track at the second anniversary of the Fujiwara Tofu Cafe. Shout out to Vinny, uh, uh, cool. one, one of our sponsors. Oh, that's nice. cool. And has has um, with with all these um, great events that you guys have been doing in this short amount of time, has Mattel, um, you know, given you guys love and seen? And oh yeah, have been watching you guys. And, and yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, last Legends tour. This was last year. Mm-hmm. The one. 2022 actually yeah, yeah. not 23 uh 2022 uh matt gay was actually kind of uh kind of uh, toying around with the idea that hey you know that would be a cool setup you know and i and i kind of mentioned it hey that'd be cool if we if we could set it up at at mattel yeah, headquarters yeah, and, yeah, yeah yeah you know what maybe i can make it happen and so he made a few phone calls next thing you know He's sending me a contact from from Mattel, and I'm like, That's "Amazing!" And I was like, "Hey, uh, are, are you sure we could set this up?" And he goes, "Yeah, man, you guys are good." And like, I mean, it, it is something very unique, especially you know the way my sons conduct the races. You know, it, it, it's not like your typical, 
you show up to Mattel or some of these places that have the track sets or yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's just a free for all. They just have a ramp on a table, and any all the kids just go like ah, and they're like fighting and pushing uh, and like to put it all over, and then like yeah. oh no, my car, where'd it go? You know. Yeah. And so here, we, my son's conducted, and we actually ban people from the track, just like oh, yeah. real life. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, definitely real, like real life. life. Get, get You're out of here. here. Oh. So, but but yeah. so when when. Uh, Obviously, they they saw maybe some clips on Instagram. They they approved it. Obviously, I, I mean, they didn't tell me that, but I'm sure that's what they saw. And they're like, "Yeah, we, we know what you guys can do." So we were able to set up at uh, Mattel headquarters, which was amazing. Clap night, and they even got to meet Larry Wood. Oh yeah, whoa, uh, Mr. Hey. Larry Wood himself. Yeah, <laughs> wow, yeah, that's so, amazing. and he it was it was so honorable because it was amazing when we set up the track. This is before the crowd was let in. They let us in so we could set up. You know, yeah. It was about 45 minutes to set it up. Larry was walking around, and, and he came over to our track. What is this? Like, Sir, this is our track. And I was like, whoa, can we get a photo? Sure. And we didn't even know wow. what to say because we're like, wow, yeah. this is the legend yeah. coming over to us and you know, loved our setup. That's amazing. Obviously. And, and, and the, the same thing with when, you know, you know, when once people started to come in, to the to the venue it was the legends tour uh, they were automatically signing up well where do we sign up you know what's what's how does it work so we had to come up with a with a, you know a sign-in sheet and so we could put the name of the event at what time just like a real race track yeah yeah you know type. Yeah. and and what's what's amazing is to see that it's just the passion that kind of fueled this whole project right yeah having a business plan making money wasn't your first first you know plan of attack no look yeah. at what it it's it's become it's flourished to where people are looking for you guys yeah you know and actually look i gave your dad a contact yeah. what my, my friend's tw- um son's 21st birthday and he wants to do it at the Valley Relic Museum, and nice. they're going to set that oh, yeah. up. Oh, that's a but great they, location. They, yeah. they yeah. want to hire you guys to do his birthday. So nice. it's those kind of you know the word of mouth, and but that's what I love is that you guys aren't driven by you guys yeah. making money. And you yeah, guys, you're still you're a senior in high school. You just yeah, graduated, high school senior. but that that says uh, something for for somebody to pursue their dream. Yeah, it because uh, uh, back to the whole thing with Barry, it uh, a a big uh, part of how we came to be was because. He and I, when we were racing on Barry's track, we got really competitive because we brought our own cars from home. And I'm like, this is my fastest one. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to beat him. <laughs> well, he's he's, he's yeah. the owner of the track and he brought his car. I'm going to beat him. Yeah. And we were going and going like all day, like racing, like, oh, this yeah. one. Oh, yeah. Well, I got a faster one. And then yeah. like, <laughs> so yeah, yeah we, we became super competitive. And then we were like, we could drive, like, we could do this and have like everybody exactly. be competitive, be, be like, get into it. Because like a lot of people are like, yeah. oh, no, I won't do that. But like, when they have their own car and they're racing, that like it just could, it just increases the intensity exactly. more. Yeah. And you, yeah. Because it's it, like a real exactly. race. race yeah, yeah. It's, like it, I said, it's a real racetrack experience. Exactly. That you have you guys go through rounds? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay. So we, we have it all organized. Yeah. So the, the for our tournaments, because we we conduct when we bring the track to places, we conduct our official tournaments with prizes and stuff and trophies. So the way we do, usually do it is an elimination tournament where uh, we do heats, and the first one in each heat to score three wins. Is the winner so just winning once isn't enough because like a lot of a lot of times that would happen would be like i like one of them wins and he's like i win i win i win but then they run it again and then he ends up not winning yeah yeah because like, like yeah, yeah. a yeah. leaderboard winner board or do we you, where you can see the I, competition and make it to a final or something yeah like so so we have like a little stack uh, like a little tier we have a tier okay. where we yeah. place the cars that are finalists and uh near the end after Everybody who's won a round, they get put into the final round. And then at the very end, all the winners race each other. And then the first one to get three wins first is the winner. Okay. That's cool. So that there's like there's no flukes like, oh, you he won he this guy just won once. He wins it all. No. You gotta win three times. You gotta be a consistent winner and win three times. And then that gets you to be the champion. That's cool. Yeah. I gotta ask are people modding their cars out to absolutely. like try to well, yeah, we, we encourage that. Yeah. We encourage that, but we do have to set rules too, you know, because we've had people try to sneak in pullbacks or or even uh oh, the really? Hot Wheels remote control. What, what? Oh. put this one? No, no, we gotta inspect it, you know, just like oh, dude, gotta, go, gotta go through yeah. tech. Yeah. yeah. Well, Every like, car's gotta go uh, through uh, tech. So a NAS, that, a NASCAR when, inspection, and then, right? And that that's kinda like when when it when it becomes a thing where they there, there's even kids that bring a, their Ziploc bags full of Hot Wheels, and they're like, oh, I want to try one of these and get the fastest. So my sons will help them select yeah. out of all their pack. And then, you know, you see these adults passing by. I was like, is he going to race all those? No, you're only allowed to race one. Yeah. But he's here. 
this is like pre qualification stage where he's testing out all his cars and my sons are helping yeah, that's them. Amazing. And then from all those cars, we pick the fastest so we can, you know, uh -huh. register that that driver with that car and you know so it, that he and, has the yeah. best chance and the details don't stop there and the legitness of of the race um um event it, can you explain like the timer where you got that, that, that how it monitors the the time of like first second uh oh. third yeah oh, you yeah. got the, that uh, design the, yeah the timer itself um it uh playtronics is the the guy he's he's based out of israel play robotics uh, play, play, robotics. Ro play, ro play robotics i'm sorry so um uh, watching some of these YouTubers, you know, have these tracks, we, you know, we, we kind of get some ideas from them. And uh, these, some of these YouTubers have uh, these elaborate type of uh, timers set up. So going back to our track, uh, that's a six lane, it originally started with the six lane. Uh, we, we had to figure out a way to not just use the Hot Wheel Mattel uh, design finish line because that only marks the winner oh, okay you know there's always second place third place so that was that would become technical when when we have the final the finalists do the last race because we need to know who's second place because we have a podium you know yeah. for mm -hmm. second yeah. and third mm -hmm. uh and the so prizes as well yeah and the prizes so so we kind of had to figure out well the the slow motion camera on our phone is good but we want to show people like hey look it, the marker says there you came in second third so I reached out to this guy uh, through social media, through Instagram. He says, hey, I, I noticed you sell, you make these, 3D print them, and you add servos and all this and timers, and depending on the distance, you can program it. And I reached out to him. I said, hey, I have, I have a six-lane uh, track. And he, was very, he wasn't very familiar with it because, you know, he would only do two tracks or, or yeah. four tracks. Yeah. And then I, I started sending him photos. Hey, I have an extra one. If you want, I can ship it to you. And use it as a like uh, like your display or your prototype, so yeah. you can make one. And I, I basically over the over the message system, I explained to him what I wanted, what we wanted actually. Yeah. So I say we want we want a finish line with sensors on the on the on each track, That's cool. so it can track each placement of a vehicle, mm -hmm. you know, of the cars that would cross the finish line. So then, and how close to? I mean, a millisecond. I mean, how do, do you know? Uh, how close it comes? Some of the, it, I, was, I was watching some of the video and oh, they yeah. were pretty close. Yeah, you, you can't it, tell. It it's very accurate. Okay. It's very accurate. Sometimes with the lighting, it, you know, if the sunlight is hitting it a certain way, yeah. Sometimes it it, it blinds the sensor, mm. so we kind of have to stand over it to kind of give it some shade, so it, that it it it, it actually Sees senses. It. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because if if there's too much light or sunlight, uh, sometimes it doesn't capture it. So, you know, those are some of the little tweaks that we have to figure out the day yeah, of, sure. depending on where our setup is That's and so things like that. Cool. But <clears throat> but that, that is a game changer, too, because, you know, no one had ever developed that. And even the, the, this guy said, hey, uh, can, uh, my, you know, are you going to be exclusive? No, I, we just want one for us. You, you can sell them. So he started selling them now. So people oh, who cool. follow us, we get a lot of messages. People, you know, parents say, hey, we really like your track. I want to set up something like that for my boys at home or my my daughter mm -hmm. or whatever because even girls get into it you know oh yeah and we're like sure and we we give them all the re resources hey this is the guy who 3d printed the stands nice. this is the guy who did the the timer and, and and it starts to add up they realize like oh it's not that easy just you know yeah come exactly. up with with something so they, they'll just stick to the basic like yeah. when we started just the basic six six lane track and then yeah. extend three, it three, with three tables how long does it take you guys to set it all up and break it all down <sighs> it, that's got to be some work. It, yeah, it yeah. kind of depends. It usually fluctuates around 45 minutes to an hour if conditions are unfavorable, like unfavorable slopes of concrete that we're on. Oh, really? Yeah, because we also have to take that into account because uh -huh. unfavorable slopes will, like, if the slope is supposed to be going this way, but they have us set up, like, the way we're set up is, like, Wonky, per per perpendicular of, to yeah. the slope, then we have to oh. put wedges to oh, even it out God. this way. Yo, so it, it there's a whole science behind it, like physics, you know. Yeah. So it it does require us, you know, when when the people are uh, reaching out to us by email or through Instagram, hey, you know, I want, my husband's turning 45, and I want to have a birthday party, and this would be the best thing for him. And when, when we have to cover all those bases, hey, yeah. uh, what's the spacing? Is it going to be inside? Is it going to be outdoors? Is it going to be at a hall? Yeah. So we have to figure that out as well. And say, okay, if it's going to be outdoors, is it on grass or is it on concrete? 
Where's how's the slope? Which way is the wind blowing? You know, yeah, yeah. Exactly. that too. That, yeah, that, if it's too windy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if it's we, windy, we've had setups yeah. where it, you know, some of these Santa Ana winds are sure. brutal. Crazy. Yeah. So we've Sucking learned from goes. the past where, where we set up, all of a sudden the gust of wind comes and boom, it blows off. Oh. Half the track, <laughs> like, wow. you know? it's like whoa, what happened? So we learned from that. And now we bring these mini bungees and we strap down the track. That's things crazy. like that because this is a this is a gravity. Uh, sure. track it's, it's yeah. not like you know it it doesn't have those those boosters or, or yeah propellers just, hey hey frank yes. a dumb dumb question here maybe yeah, but no is problem. there any crossover from the slot car world because when i was when i was a kid i mean slot cars were at you know different scale slot cars and it seems like there might be like i don't know some kind of crossover there or no it's just a completely separate it's world. a separate world i mean because those to, are powered yeah those are powered they're, you need electricity not only that, it's it's more expensive. I mean, think about it. You you have under two dollars, you can go to any Target or Walmart yeah. and just pretty much pick any of the of the cars that are that are even even the ones that are fantasy cars. They're designed for track. Yeah, they're, they're really pull, good. Pull it off the the peg and go buy it and crack it open and put it on the track. That's it. That's it. Yeah. I mean, for a slot car, yeah, not every kid uh, parent could afford. Mm, you know, yeah. A, yeah. Slot I, I've seen more adults like doing that. it than kids. Anyway, I mean, yeah. when I was a yeah. kid, it was kids, but now they're you know big and elaborate yeah. and all those. Well, it's funny that you say that because sometimes you know th th when we're set, it, when we have our setup, and, and my boys are trying to flag people, like, hey, you guys want to, you guys interested in racing? They're like, well, what do you mean racing? Yeah. What is this? It's a racetrack. You know, it's kind of like we're sarcastic, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't you see? <laughs> 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 but, they, but yeah, it's like it's like almost like a dumb question. Like, really, like, you don't know. Like, what you you <laughs> yeah. So and you know, we, occasionally we get that macho guys like, oh, I, I race real cars. Oh, well, really? Okay, that's good. But your real car is not getting you the prizes that we have. Well, what are the prizes? Oh, first place prize is a hundred dollars cash. Oh, really? Where, where do I sign up? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you need your Hot Wheel first of all. Do you have one? Oh no, I don't. I, I thought you only played with real cars. <laughs> well, no, I do have some. <laughs> all of a sudden, it wow. changes the mood. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. But it's cool because, you know, then they realize, like, wow, I'm really still a kid. I still yeah. can play, you know. And that's, that's the cool part about it. Like, most of the, believe it or not, most of the private parties that we do, yeah, birthdays, they're for adults. Yeah, yeah exactly. And the kids' parties that usually we get hired for or they get hired for, they end up turning into adult parties right the parents, yeah because yeah. the parents, parents like, comes like hey exactly. we want to race now Can everybody on our own staff yeah. you know yeah. but it, it's cool because it's very unique and it unites everybody i mean think about it like some of the things that i've heard people say is like you know oh well i i can rent a moon balance for the whole day and it's only going to be 300 dollars. i go yeah but is grandma gonna get in the moon bounce? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, she's not. No, no. I'm gonna go race I, though. I, I think the grandma's grandma race. gonna race with your, exactly. with you well, and your grandchildren, that's right. but I everybody think, else, you know. I think you guys dealing with the Hot Wheels and just diecast in general brings that nostalgia. Yeah. You see, I think we had yeah. a, a previous episode. We talked about like, oh, you know, what inspired you, Helm, to get you know to have a love for the automobile. Yeah. And it stemmed from my collection of like Hot Wheels, you know. Yeah. So yeah, um, we, we as, as we Hot uncover Wheels. this a bit more, we're gonna definitely meet a lot of people that. Um, are going to embrace this um, movement that's been around since 1960s. You know, yeah. you get anybody coming in and saying, "I got a Matchbox." Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. we have Tomika, we have Matchbox. The, the cool thing about some of the Tomikas, and Sebastian can elaborate more on that. They have a. Uh Lots of Tomica premiums. Uh, they have things that Hot Wheels don't have. Lots of them have opening doors, but uh, not, not the main even thing the premiums. Most of the main lines have suspension. The main thing they have uh, like a little wire on the inside around on the wheels, so it has working suspension. So when you like Whoa. push down on the car, oh, it, like, really? it like squishes down oh, like, the suspension. Okay. And for tracks like our Toge track. Uh, suspension is actually a good thing because it allows the car to roll around the turns <laughs> a little while. Wow, it actually yeah, it's, does. It's, it's like the real deal. That's wow. and, and we've we've tested that. We put it to the test. With cars, some, yeah, you know. like some uh some like more heavy muscle cars that more are more like, rigid that are like really rigid and they're flat. Uh, they end up hitting three wheel motion because on the turns they like <laughs> wow. they they kind of like yeah, it's yeah. Kinda, amazing. That's cool. They kind of tip over, but for the ones with the with the suspension, they can like you know uh, navigate the turns a little better because they have. They can roll left and right, and so they're, they're they, a little more nimble. They too. become just, more nimble, just like the real deal. But yeah. that, that, well, that leads to a question then. So, when somebody, when you see the cars lining up for the beginning of the race, do you guys often look at it and go, "Oh, that one's going to win"? 
Sometimes, yeah. You know which yeah. one. We, we kind of know. I, well, they, they, they're like they're both walking yeah. encyclopedias when it comes to these. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> After racing with and owning Hot Wheels for so long, I kind of have a lot of general ideas for like, oh yeah, these are generally really good for turns. Oh yes, this one will destroy this one on the straightaway. Wow. This one might take it in the turns, but this one will get them on the straightaway. Or yeah. Or this one, this one's better all around. Or this one, oh no, that I think that one's gonna flip over. It's too top heavy. All right, we're gonna talk later because I, I need you to get me into a car that I'm a wax helm with. <laughs> <laughs> so, let, let's let, we're gonna make this happen. No, yeah. no. We'll, oh. What? Yeah, but you, but you guys, you guys should already know this because you you played with Hot Wheels too. Yeah. I mean, mm. my my boys have been playing with Hot Wheels ever since they can yeah. hold one in their hand. So combined, I I'd say they probably have about thirty years experience. Yeah. In the diecast world. Yeah. Mm. Combined. Oh wow. You know because they've they've been dealing with Hot Wheels ever since they can hold it. Mm. In yeah. Hand. Exactly. You now, know. is there one that you guys don't know? Or do you think you know pretty much everything that's out there, Hot Wheels wise? Oh, oh no, that there's okay. there's some stuff out there that even we don't know. There's there's always more room for uh, improvement in our knowledge and everything about that. I like that. Every, every time, every time I think I've known everything, here comes something else. Like, wow, I never knew that existed. I got I got to yeah, get one. Like, or, I gotta, or even I different get variations. You know, yeah, exactly. variations. Well, like, what exactly. this one came up? What? Wait a minute. We'll be we'll be opening. Uh, We'll, we'll be drilling open a car and then I'll, I'll drill open the same car re-released in in like 2020 from 2006 and then I, I noticed that they changed the interior yeah, yeah. and uh, nobody nobody knew so therefore the wow. weight is different so therefore oh. it would affect its performance on the track so like different uh, casting maybe too. yeah, yeah. D- not, d- not different that. toolings different rivet oh, really? positions wow. so, some of these Hot Wheels I guess they, the designers put personal touches and they're kind of like easter eggs too because you don't re- really see them until you until pop you it open take it open like, like the like the porsche 944 right yeah that, that one has a little uh, uh stethoscope uh, in the back of like the the trunk area in the it, luggage, the luggage in area. the luggage area but yeah you know that the store behind that right of course yeah yeah that's where i use friend that's the, doctor. Sada, the doctor yeah yeah and that's his car before he you know rest in peace ryu when um one of the main designers yeah. for um, Hot Wheels, but that was a doctor friend that he would go cruise. I mean, he already was diagnosed with cancer, would want to go cruise and just drive, and he would take that um, yeah. uh, that 944 yes. and look at that little Easter egg, that he, the detail that they put into that. Yeah, most people won't right. even notice it or even even yeah pay much think attention. Of it. Attention. Like what what is that? You know. Because you, you can see it through the window if you yeah, really look exactly, close. But exactly. But when you see it on the peg, it's like, oh, that's a cool 944, but you don't really know the story yeah. behind it and why, it, you know, little things yeah. like that. So if you're modding all these cars, let's say, you know, some guy wants to cheat like me. And, uh, <laughs> like, could somebody come in to your, one of your races with, with, you know, Hot Wheels and say, like, a th- with a 3D printed body, like a Pro Mod, could they come in? Would they be disqualified from the race because they've custom made their own car? No, no not necessarily. As long as it has uh, free wheels oh, yeah. and it and it actually fits on our track, it should be fine. Yeah. And we actually encourage that. And some people add weights to them or remove weight mm-hmm. because we do have weight limits. Anytime we have cash oh, prizes. Oh, so you have weight limits. Yeah, anytime we have cash prizes. That kind of makes it more intense, and yeah. and you see all of a sudden all these older guys that you know know their Hot Wheels too, and they'll come and they'll blow everybody away because they they have these yeah, uh, the, the, these the sixty gram Hot Wheels, yeah. Like, and uh, <laughs> and we're like, wait a minute, that, time out. That's not, that's <laughs> not fair for the little yeah. kids and yeah. everybody yeah. else yeah. Who's, yeah. who's starting to do this, you know. So we started putting limits, and even some of the hosts that you know uh, sponsor the prizes when we come. You know, sometimes we they're not getting paid to yeah. be there. They just say, "Hey, can you set up?" I go, okay, well, work a deal with us. Uh, can you sponsor the prizes? What do you mean? Oh, these are the prizes. So that motivates people to race, and they're like, "Okay, good. So here's the prize." For example, OC Yodas. Uh, Sh- shout out to Angel. Yeah, the, the nice. Yoda Trader. He hosts uh, this this thing with uh, off road, mainly Toyotas and, and Lexus uh, vehicles. That's what's called Yoda Trader down in Orange County and he honed in on them a long time ago and he, he always wanted us, us to come out there but some way somehow we could never make it because we, we always had an event that day mm-hmm. so one day he's like hey can you guys come out whenever you guys can come out and we we came out that one day and he, it just it was a total blast mm. it was like a hit sensation everybody just so now we're a staple there that's cool wow so uh, Angel uh, uh, thanks thanks to him uh, they, they've grown more they've, they've gotten a, a lot more private parties through there and he actually uh, contributes the prizes. 
First place prize is $100 cash. Second place is fifty dollars, wow. and third place is twenty five. Wow! And when he does the anniversary, we do two tournaments, so it's double the pot. So the pot is one hundred seventy five dollars. Wow. Imagine wow. that. So it really drives people like that is crazy, fun. and people yeah, yeah. drive from all over. They're like, "Where is it? Orange County? I'll be there." People, <laughs> yeah, yeah. people from and, Riverside, yeah, from Fontana, cool. they're like, "Because yeah. we ask them, how'd you hear about it? Oh, I saw your post. My sister asked me to uh, follow you, and we started following you, and I saw your post. I was like." perfect wow. and yeah. the great thing about great. that is that it's kids and adults too because when the kids they have their cars and they see wow i could win a hundred bucks yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna yeah. i'm gonna race my car yeah. Yeah. yeah and then the adults too everybody gets yeah not only that sometimes you know the the parents will come oh yeah we want to register them i go and we say what about you you guys are old enough to yeah. race too and they're like, no, no, well, this is a kid's. No, it's not really. Think about it. You increase your chances. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and then we kind of sell it to them that way too. We say, hey, look. If you all register, all four of you register as a family, you know, your son, daughter, mom, and dad, we'll put you on separate heats. Yeah. So that increases your chances. You to go. get to the finals. Yeah, you know, yeah. if, if one of you guys make it to the finals, hey, somebody's buying dinner, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> or or all that money is going to go back to buying more Hot Wheels. Yeah. That's, I'm that's sure that's that. Well, it's just that. like racing cars. It's like exactly. every time you win you money at a, a street race, yeah, parts. It goes yeah, back yeah. in the car. Oh, you got to buy tires and yeah. suspension. And you're upgrading yeah, it. Yeah, fuel, whatever. But it seems like the, the cool part is that you've leveled the playing field. Yeah. Anybody can compete. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We wanted to make it official. Yeah. Like an officially like fair and sanctioned race where oh, so it's yeah. not it's not just like anything goes yeah be, be crazy this guy completely destroys everyone or yeah. or or something that's we, cool we have like a standard yeah, yeah and, th and that kind of ties in the reason why we have barriers and stuff because we don't want people uh like let's say they get excited they 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 before we didn't have barriers we'd have literally the the kids or all the spectators would be almost leaning on the on the on the <laughs> changing on the, the angle of the, on track. the table. Yeah, yeah. no, that, not necessarily was... changing it, but they were they were right. almost. We would say, "Hey, give us some space," you know. But it, it gets so intense, so excited that, that they're literally like tapping the table, like little by little, and says, yeah. "Look, we're gonna have to put barriers." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, there's another reason too why we put barriers. We'll get into that later, but but be, because it it's it's very technical, you know. Like yeah, people say, yeah. "Hey, man, can we do that race over?" And we don't we don't do retakes. You know, yeah. if your car flips or it jumps the lane, it's, hey, it's yeah. just yeah. like the real yeah. deal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. So obvious, obvious say, oh, yeah. question, guys. Uh, how come there's no loops? I mean, I grew up on Hot Wheels, and we have oh, loops. Well, so well why, why it, no it's loops? kind of tying it back into the the like the real racetrack experience. Yeah. In a real racetrack, when when do you see a loop? Not too many. No. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> except except that uh, didn't Hot Wheels do do a, a real loop? They, yeah. they they did a stunt show in around 2011 for one of the anniversaries, I think. Yeah, that was a real loop in real life. Mm. But yeah. oh, really? I mean, obviously, oh, that was really? very well planned and yeah, you know, it wasn't a race. Don't try this no. at home. Kind so of it's yeah. Evil, evil yeah. Knievel versus <laughs> racing. It's it's a whole different thing. Yeah, yeah so we we just kind of like honed it down, simplified it to the like a real racetrack experience. Obviously, it's it's. It's not you know you're not gonna smell the octane and have yeah. all these rubber tires. Yeah. So the and the and the the wheels on the on the cars that do best on the track yeah. are the plastic wheels. Oh, okay. Because sometimes people want to buy the premium because they're the cool looking car and then With you the know rubber tires, the yeah. rubber tires, the special wheels and all that. But those actually have more friction. Or even on the on the toge course, they on every it, turn they rub against the wall. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, oh, that, so that acts as it slows them down. It hinders. It yeah. slows them. Wow. Down. But sometimes, you know, we have people that they just want to race it because they want they want the, I guess the the bragging rights. Hey, my car was at Hot Wheels racetrack, uh, yeah, and 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 they and they I raced it. They don't care if it slows it down. So I just want to put it. They don't care. They're, they're yeah. still registered. Yeah. That's cool. That is and, so and you know, as they see it coming down, you know, it'll get stuck like on the on the third hairpin or the fourth one. And you know we kind of joke with them, say, "Hey, I ran out of gas or something." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or if it's a yeah. rotary, it's like, "Oh, what happened?" You know. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, so I've got I've got a trivia another oh. trivia question. Oh, to throw at uh, you guys. oh no! This is a Hot Wheels based one. Give me an oh. ulcer, man. Okay. <laughs> now these guys may get it. All right. Since they're so good at the Hot Wheels, no, um, I don't have I'm any. Put my trust. money on them. I don't have any <laughs> trust yeah. in YouTube. No, you shouldn't. <laughs> All right. So here's the question. Hot Wheels, manufactured by Mattel, was founded in 1945 by Matt Mason and Elliot Handler. Handler and, well, Matt and Elliot, so Matt Tell, mm -hmm. okay, 
You guys know that. Yes. You, yeah, I can tell. Yeah, what we can. <laughs> Handler and his wife bought Mason shares. The Handlers had two children. What were their names? Hmm. Okay. That I don't know. Yeah, we, 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 we couldn't do I, I, I thought this was going to be a, a trivia question about, about the names of the diecast. <laughs> what, what's that got to do with Hot Wheels? <laughs> this is a damn know. good trivia question. Well, I don't know. I don't, 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 don't look at me. I don't, I don't know anything no, about know. this. Okay. So, so I like that. Definitely don't. So nobody, not no not guesses not a clue, on what their two children's names are? Not a clue. How about if I give you... Okay, I'll give you a clue. It's a boy and a girl. Maybe one of them is Ken. I don't know. <laughs> Barbie? <laughs> Barbie. Ken and, Ken Barbie. Barbie. Ken and Barbie. Uh, Ken and Barbie. Uh, we have the expert. Let's go see what the expert says. And what is the answer? Hi, CJ. Yeah, the answer is uh, Barbara and Kenneth, uh, also known as Barbie and Ken. Uh, <laughs> those were two kids of one of the Mattel founders, a guy named uh, Elliot Handler. Uh, and of course, very famous for Hot Wheels, which were which came out of the Mattel Corporation. Incidentally, uh, Larry Wood is a very, very famous designer, uh, uh, designing Hot Wheels for 30, 40 years. Very iconic. And my young son and I, we were at a car show one time, and there was Larry Wood. And of all the people that were there, which was uh, Henrik Fisker, uh, Jay Leno, he saw uh, Larry Wood and he wanted his picture with him. So we have a picture of my son, Max, with uh, Larry Wood, which really made made Max's day. Hopefully it made Larry's uh, day as well. I know I know. seeing Larry Wood a lot. Even the guys in our set are pretty excited to see Larry Wood. <laughs> <laughs> wait, you, it was Ken and It is. Yeah, yeah, I just took it. You because, you, you know, that was, that was the big thing, you know, until Hot Wheels came about. And they just kind of, Hot Wheels just took over. Oh, I mean, they... Wh- See, is my daughters, I asked that same question to my daughters. They couldn't figure it out. In fact, my oldest daughter goes, wait a minute. What kind of stupid question yeah. is that? How am I supposed to know what their kids' names are? But, oh, my God. That's that's a cool trick. Yeah, so let's see here. They, they also said, too, that they mentioned Larry Wood. Oh. Yeah. yeah, Oh, Larry yeah. Wood. Yeah, Larry Wood. And we've actually got some photos with Larry Wood and our historian, David Neal. So they met. Oh, oh wow. wow. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Nice. So pretty exciting stuff. I I, I wonder if you guys would figure <laughs> that, that out. That is with, a cool, uh, oh man. Yeah, with the you know Barbie cool. and Ken, there was their two kids, part of Mattel. Are you done with the questions? I'm. I, I, <laughs> so I have a third. <laughs> what third? I have a th- no. I'm joking. Okay. <laughs> okay. No. I, That's enough trivia. Oh, oh go ahead. school. Oh no. Um. No. Go, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say. Um. It seems to me that this evolution that you guys have gone through. Um. In the last well, almost twenty mm-hmm. years or to, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. Um. Would you say that it all started when you decided to start the meet? Like, because it seems like everything's kind of stemming off of this meet that you started. Yeah, I, I never in my wildest dreams did I think we were going to be, you know, so well known as OJCM. And uh, not that we were, were publicly known because it's almost like word of mouth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, but it is known. And then people see posts, you know, post, people post and they use hashtag OJCM stuff. Yeah. And, and they can relate to their those vehicles that are in other countries as well. I mean, I, randomly, I, I'll get emails or, or messages through Instagram or Facebook. Hey, uh, you know, we're wondering if we can if we can get a sticker. So yeah, obviously made some stickers, and and our stickers are have been plastered all over the world. Yeah, wow. I mean, uh, Australia, South Africa, Iceland, Ireland. Yeah, I mean, parts of Europe. You know, random people just. They they love what what we do and with the car meets and they're like man well, I wish we could do that here but there's not enough cars yeah. of that yeah. type of yeah. the Japanese classics but I have this okay. yeah. I mean I see the sticker all over yeah. California northern and southern California yeah. just seeing around I'm like wow this is yeah, I, and then everybody that I know even at Seven Stock or even well, like the, like uh, the VMJ you guys right there yeah. they, I mean they all have been to your meet or support your meet yeah or like whatever. like Savant you know Savant is is one of the ones who originally you know started to come to our meet you know uh his is more of a club but his his is honed down to the like the uh smog pre-smog vehicles okay. which mm-hmm. is they're still classics they're still part of our same group so we're, they're they're kind of like our sister group yeah and you know anytime they have events and stuff you know we know about it they they support us too and the boys as well nice. but but it's it's such a small car community even though even though it's so small it's huge because we we, you, even with VJMU, they they have they have uh, a big following with uh, the Australian side as well. So I mean, and and it's it's not just about the club or the the group. It's it's the culture itself yeah. with, with the classic. Yeah, you know, exactly. Keep keeping it moving, keeping yeah. it keeping keeping it alive. Yeah. Because most people say, oh well, my my car is not a 
the show car. Well, you don't have to have a show car. Yeah. yeah. It could be just like that 620 pickup. You know, you you make it your your own. Your own, exactly. Yeah. And and that's those personal t- touches that you add. That that's what makes makes the car. Exactly. You know, yeah. but but and and that's that's where kind of like people will ask, oh well, what would I need to to be part of this group? I go, you just need a Japanese classic. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't care if you wash it. I don't care if it has, you know, it's different like colored fenders. Yeah. Or, yeah. As long as you share that same passion that we do. Yeah. Well, it's like the you same know? thing that going to your meet, the qualification is you need a, a Japanese classic, right? Whether it's a $500 car or $500,000 yeah, car. And the same thing with the Hot Wheels. You just need to start with a Hot Wheel car, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Yeah, so, it kind yeah. of ties in with yeah. And it makes it easy or more attainable for more people to enjoy it together. And, and that was the thing, too, that, you know, it, it kind of separates from the the slot car world or whatever. And, yeah. and, 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 and it's, it's more... Uh, comparable to the Pine Derby mm-hmm. race car because oh, it's the yeah. same concept, right. yeah. same yeah, concept, yeah. Right. except you know, Pine Derby, you know, you, it takes weeks to build and yeah. paint and do that. You can still do the same thing with a Hot Wheel, I, and I believe it's even harder to do it on a Hot Wheel because mm-hmm. oh, it yeah. requires more skills, yeah, yeah. more, uh, you know, more hands on and, and working on smaller, smaller, yeah. yeah. So, so you can relate to uh, the, the Pine Derby style, but with metal, yeah, metal yeah. cars and. And and it's the same thing. It's it's down a hill or down the slope. Slope, yeah. Because us. it's gravity fed, you know. So it, it is. It, it you don't have to necessarily be part of the Boy Scouts to to race on our track. Yeah. yeah. Where yeah. most Pine Derbies, you know, it was either a club or you had to be <laughs> some sort of of a type of organization that that hosts those type yeah. of events. And and those tracks were actually more a, a, a fixed track or, you know, not as uh, as practical as ours. Yeah. Mm. You know. So. That's another thing too. That uh, ours is so practical, we can pretty much take it anywhere. Yeah, you know, uh, we've taken it to the weirdest places too. You know, and even uh, even in Vegas, we set it up oh, by, yeah. uh, by the uh, Las Vegas uh, welcome sign. We set it up there. <laughs> That's and, uh, really? Yeah, we, it was a uh, Supers in Vegas. Uh, was it uh, 2021? I think mm, or 2022. Really? Yeah, yeah. Supers in Vegas. They they wanted us to bring it. You know, ha- ha- my friend Javier Parada. He said, "Hey, you guys want to come out? Yeah, come out. We'll we'll come out." And That's we made cool. it a thing. We we, we came out there and we say, "You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna set up the track at the fabulous Las Vegas welcome wow. sign." And they're like, "What do you mean? Yeah, we're gonna park, we're gonna offload it, and we're not gonna set up the table. We're gonna load it and and set it up right there on the on the on the turf mm-hmm. with the background. So we actually have a, an iconic photo That's of cool. that with a bunch of Supras because that was the wow. whole oh, yeah. the whole theme was." Supras in Vegas. That's cool. It's Supras invade Vegas. That's oh. Cool. Oh, very cool. Oh, dude, we we gotta have you guys at Seven Stock, man. All rotary event. Oh, they dude. will finish. They will finish. <laughs> you will see. Oh, most of them. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, put it out there so they, the, oh, yeah, the organizers sure. can uh, connect. If Burn's see watching, it. I'm gonna tell Burn, dude. We gotta get them at uh, Seven Stock, man. Because yeah. now yeah. they're at Irwindale, and now we, we, they have uh, drag racing. Oh, yeah. there. And that turned out to be a big deal. The first time we did it at Irwindale, and everybody's watching the drag racing. It doesn't matter. It was like rotary versus the world world kind of thing yeah. right you know so why would they not want to do this at, right. you know every now everybody can race at seven stock you know yeah and and that's that's another thing you you bring up a good point because everybody can race with on the track on our track yeah not necessarily the real track exactly you know people go as spectate and all that but absolutely but even even if they're not there to spectate or they're just there with a buddy or whatever they see our our racetrack they they can Still reminiscent. Hey, I used to play with these Hot Wheels. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. and, and yeah. sometimes, some of the times, they they just admire their setup and the nice. the, the diorama style um, parking lot and the street it's signs. The details. Yeah, all the, the little details. details of p- the palm trees because we're in Southern California. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. So all the little touches, people are like, wow. No, I mean, you you you, you didn't know? um you didn't miss a beat on the details. Like even from the uniform, um, the logo, the branding, oh, yeah. right? And one thing that's pretty cool is that you have a sponsorship wall where on the track, you know, when people pay, you could have your logo, you know, um, placed with a little decal of like the different companies that are. You oh, know, yeah. Yeah. Those, the, those were uh, th- we ran out of the real estate on those really quick because <laughs> when people saw what we were doing, automatically they're like, oh, can we put our sticker there? Well, that's a sponsorship wall. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, how much does it cost? 20 bucks. 
You know, <laughs> all, all affordable. See, yeah, again, so everything's so a, that, everything's that to scale. Yeah, everything's, yeah, everything's to scale. scale. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I was like, that's it, twenty bucks. Well, it's yeah. to scale. But <laughs> if you really, it, you know, if it was for real, it'd probably 20, be like, you know, yeah. twenty thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I, I know one sixty four scale, right? <laughs> yeah. 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 And I, and with this great project that you guys built, um, you know, you've definitely met a lot of people because I've heard through the episode and the interview, you've been oh, yeah. shouting out a lot of cool key people. But yeah. what I noticed is the details on both of your jackets that. Um, I see signatures on. Oh yeah, can you expound uh, on that? Yeah, yeah. Those so, so, uh, so, what do you call it? One of them's uh, 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 Maya Arido. She's a lady drifter, as well as uh, Nanami, H Hannah, and Arisa. They, they, we, we met them at the Fujiwara Tofu Cafe. Oh nice. They were hosting a big meet. It was uh, Monday night. They were, they were, uh, they were uh, signing for their fans. They, they, they drift cars in Japan. Like uh, Nanami has a Mark IV Supra. Is that oh, her? Nice. Uh, the daughter of. Um, uh, or Orido or whatever. Yes, yes. That's her. Do That's his, his daughter. daughter. Yeah. Dang. So they they actually <laughs> got to meet her, and then when we were there, they, we didn't really have anything. To, people, we saw people bringing, you know, memorabilia posters and stuff to sign. And I just told him, hey, why don't you guys have her sign your yeah. jackets? Yeah. You know? That's perfect. That was, uh, I see yeah, a big was, heart on there, too. Oh, is, yeah. that, yeah. is that her? Uh, yeah. 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 That was uh, Maya. <laughs> so so the cool thing is that we that, that day we were we were set up there. We were set We had the track set up. So that obviously they, they had their track suits. Oh. Because okay. normally they, they wear a, a race, race track suit. Yeah. That's part of the theme, cool. you know. The fire and, they, and they have their... Fireproof racing suit. Yeah. Oh, really? Simpson? Yeah. <laughs> so since this was a <laughs> night event, they, had, they they just happened to have their jackets oh, with their yeah, suits, so cool. we're like perfect opportunity for them to get signed, you know. Yeah. Oh, she signed both of your guys' jackets. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you both got hearts too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Where are the other people? And we got photos with them too. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Oh. Where are the other people? Oh well, well, uh, what do you call that? Why it's uh, Ma Maya, Nanami, Hannah, and Arisa. Oh, nice. And I, I, were they at the same event or two, uh, th two separate events? Three of them were. Nanami had her own event. Yeah, that we, we brought. We happened to have the jacket on another event too. That's when. Oh, that's got cool. That's cool. Yeah. That is cool. <laughs> but what's cool also about the the track is you know when when people see it and they're like, hey man, can you can you send us a video of of because they can't be there. Yeah. Oh yeah. I said no. Just follow us and catch us on the next one, or we might be near your town. You yeah. Know? Mm -hmm. uh, but reason why is like i don't want people to because people even say hey you guys should start your own youtube video kind of like you know these youtubers yeah. yeah well i mean yeah but maybe they get some revenue and stuff we're not trying to do it for that reason it's more for the live experience yeah yeah because even though those those youtubers are very successful and they they have great commentaries and they're they're a blast to listen to you're you're essentially just watching cars race yeah. and, and you're not getting the full experience like yeah I mean, with us, you you can see like some of the videos we shot or you know we we shared, you know yeah. the the reaction of people yeah. that the kid, that is priceless. The kid, yeah. the kid standing right there, two feet from the track, put his car on the track to race, and he races his car, and he's like, "That's mine." Yeah, I'm yeah. 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 yeah, I won. I won. Not yeah. only that, and and he if he or she places. I mean the the look on their face is priceless. Wow. I bet. You cannot replicate that on yeah, YouTube. Yeah, uh, totally. Well, I saw the photo with the with the girl with the little the trophy. Tiny trophy. I think yeah. it was one of the photos oh, yeah. you guys yeah. shared yeah. with us. And yeah, so, so and, happy. And, and and you know, believe it or not, and and some some events. I, I remember this one in particular. We were at the Peterson. The Peterson actually uh, allowed us to set up there. Oh, really? Shout, shout, shout out to the Peterson as well. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, Peterson, as you know, you know they 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 kind of have a light tight circle oh yeah. they're, they're not going to just allow anybody just yeah. to set up and obviously they saw what we did and and what, that's huge uh, the professional look that they have with their suits and the track and all yeah. that there's, there's nobody out there doing this yeah exactly and you guys are um making it easier for everybody because you could you bring the track to their area their yeah, neighborhood exactly. yeah. which a, is making it more accessible it's a, it's a pop -up. Yeah. So, and i think obviously that ties into what we believe here at west of tulsa is is being hands-on, living the moment, and working I'm technically with your hands. You're not doing this on an iPhone. This is not right. a digital right. experience. This is an analog experience. Right. And I think that's what... And it's I'm, live. And it's everything that's in this... I mean, you guys yeah. saw yeah. in this museum, oh, yeah. the collection of die-cast cars. So, like, you know, I think Richard would definitely approve. No, he would. Of, he, oh, yeah. He would, he would race. 
Yeah. <laughs> he would and be. I bet you he even had his own Hot Wheels. Oh, oh I'm, yeah. sure, oh, yeah. I'm sure, sure of that. Yeah. And yeah. Speaking about the Hot Wheels, I, and I, 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 I just noticed right now these two oh, yeah. cars that are on your chair. So, like, you have a 8.6 there, yep. and I don't know what the other car is. Are, is there a significance? Of uh, it's just my pocket ride for today. Yeah. Pocket oh, ride. Nice. <laughs> pocket ride. Yeah, we're like going to do a pocket check on all you guys. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I, didn't, I, got a, I got a repo truck. I got no, a repo. You guys got one. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah, exactly. yeah. It's just not in your pocket right yeah, now. Yeah, exactly. Well, he always tells me every time he gives me a Hot Wheels, like, don't open it. I'm like, what's well, certain don't ones. Where's the fun? Certain ones. Where's the fun? Exactly. See? Come on. You're gonna, it's like, why well, you have a car you don't drive? Okay, okay. Time out, time out. I have one theory. If if you're a, a collector, I mean, oh, yeah. there's yeah. different type of yeah, collectors, yeah, exactly. right? Yeah. But a true collector, I always tell the boys and other yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, I've, I'm, I'm always constantly telling people this too. What what I do, what I usually end up doing is uh, I end up buying like four of each car. Got it. Got it. I have one to open, one to keep, one to customize, and then one to sell. Wow. wow, that's. I wish I could do that in I like the that. big so, scale. So, so you, we like really, that. if you really like think that. about it, we're not really that type of collector. No, yeah, <laughs> no. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I would go broke. Yeah. Hey, oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. So, yeah, so but there are collectors out there that they'll, they'll buy, you know, multiple, the same, multiple, the yeah. same casting four or five times. Mm. And wow. when you say it's um, your, what was it? What was it? Um, titled pocket, my pocket ride. Yeah, pocket, pocket ride. ride. So does that rotate every day? Yeah, completely? I wow. Since, in the mood, since, since I have such a big collection of cars, I have a big display case on my wall, and like whichever one it, uh, I want to take today, like oh, I just want to take this car with me today. And I I mean, what what is that? What is that decision that that makes you pick that particular car? I don't know. Just the mood, just your mood, and mood, yeah. It's like it's, it's like, so it's like you're wearing a watch, a different yeah, watch yeah, yeah, every day, yeah. so cool. or a pen, or you, no, know, exactly. you do pocket dump. Don't yeah. let me dump out my pockets right now. <laughs> <laughs> Everyday carry. Everyday yeah. 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 EDC. Carry. EDC. Yeah. Yeah. It basically, it's part of your EDC. Yeah, yeah. You know, which which uh, no, mo it. most of the EDC guys or or people that are into that, you know, you yeah, you, they're adults. Yeah. Oh, exactly. But this kind of it, it kind of encourages kids to start. The EDC. Absolutely. They don't That's realize so that cool. this is their yeah, EDC. You for know? sure. Like when they were little, they they always had. Yeah. I was. They I always never, had. A, never left home without my Hot Wheels. Yeah, <laughs> they always had really? one in their hand, no matter what. And then they also had pockets. And that's one thing I tell kids like when they come to these, you know, events. I say, Hey, you ready to race? I go, Yeah, I'm ready to race. Okay, where's your car? Oh, can I pick one of those? No, those are ours. <laughs> where's you where's your car? You got to bring your. And car. Oh, well, I've been I with you all the time. And, and then and then yeah, I yeah. I make it a point. It says. Dad, you brought your son to a car show without their car? <laughs> wow. How many pockets do you have? Oh, five. One, two, three, four. That's five cars. One one car in each that pocket, at so least. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So cool. That's a good but, point. Yeah, but but going back to the the that one incident we had at uh, the Peterson that was mentioned. Oh, yeah. Uh, there was a, the first place winner at that particular event at the Peterson. This kid bust out into tears tears of joy wow that was like that was that's that's what made it i was like this is why we don't do it on youtube yeah that's cool because you're not gonna yeah. you're not gonna see that that's yeah. good man. really like you know, that. this was that kid's first trophy probably i don't know yeah first trophy ever for anything yeah you know like an actual trophy he's holding and yeah. and, and his car is on the on podium. the podium that's first place yeah and you can only you earn know? it by showing up yeah, yep. and that that's why that's right. you know we we do teasers like you know some of the clips I sent you, mm -hmm. those are teasers that we'll post on for the next race or whatever. Yeah, to kind of encourage people. Oh, well, how does it work? How is it? And and sure enough, when they come and they sign up, well, how does it work? Oh, well, you got to come back at this time because this is when we have our drivers meeting. Make sure you have your helmet, <laughs> really? stuff like that. So, yeah. so they're like, what do you mean? I was like, no, I'm just kidding about the helmet. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but but those are some of the the things that I want them to be exposed to. Like, wow, yeah. they have a drivers meeting. Yeah. yeah, it's like the real thing. That's you, so. And we go. Sebastian goes over the details and the, the rules and what disqualifies or not. You know, I mean, he, he can talk more about that. You know, and even even as as far as a commentator. He's, he's uh, yeah, yeah, that's I'm, cool. I'm kind, of, yeah, I'm kind of the uh, the officiator for the for all the races. Yeah. So I put the cars on the top, and then I press the button, send them down, and I call out everything that's happening. Sometimes, sometimes it's kind of just like, yep, that car has the lead, and he's got the lead the whole time. But then sometimes it's like this one has the lead in the first corner, but then around the second corner, this one takes the lead, <laughs> that's and then very like, intense. And, and then, then, yeah. and then once they, it gets oh, on the straightaway, they, they, like, they get to the final corner. This car has the lead, but then down the straightaway, the other one takes a lead tight. on uh, the straightaway. Uh, and it's like, so cool. oh my god! And uh, the amazing thing is that uh, Sebastian has honed it down so good, where. I don't think, and I challenge people 
to try to to try to re replicate what he does because it is a it is a commitment and dedication because you, you I don't know how he does it because yeah. he <laughs> he has to know each car mm. and mind you when people are signing up you know sometimes they for, Sebastian uh, what what car is this and just by glancing oh it's this no. oh, so we put it I, you know I put it on there sometimes I don't have my reading glasses I was like can't read that so. <laughs> but but I know that it, problem it, but it's <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's so it, the the comments that when he's doing the the announcements and all that it, it's so precise where he he doesn't have time to rehearse yeah, this I, is on, I, I call it on I, the fly. I call it as it happens. As it's happening. Wow. Well, the races that's last like that's eight a, seconds, don't they? I mean, yeah. is that like well, eight seconds? It's no, it it's, it depends uh, on the for the straightaway, the quarter mile. Uh, that usually lasts around two two and a half seconds for like a pretty average fast time. For the towgate course, it usually lasts around yeah five five to eight seconds actually. Yeah, yeah. It, it all depends because some some cars are slower than others. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So from start to finish, yeah, it, it can sometimes That's cool. sometimes drag on to about eight seconds. Mm. But the cool part is that you know where you know they they're they're signing up, and and if we're doing the Toge course, it's five lanes, so the maximum capacity of participants who who are racing their cars is yeah. twenty five. Mm. That means we have five heats. Oh, I see. I see. So imagine that he has to he. I mean, he's he's got it in his head. He has to memorize each each make and, wow. and, and type of car it is, Amazing. and call it out as it's happening for each heat, mm -hmm. not just for each heat for each you know each round because yeah. he, you know each heat can it can actually drag on to what almost sometimes what, sometimes some, they take longer because uh, sometimes it'll be a shutout where one car like wins three it completely destroys the rest and he gets three points and he moves on to the final round that's it. But sometimes this one wins one, but then in the next round, the other another car comes in from the other side and takes him. So now we're one to one, and then they keep going. Yeah. This one has two. Oh, but now this one's oh, got yeah. two. Oh, and then oh, but then these two have two. These two have two. And then, but then here comes another one, and that one scores a point. So now we got to keep going. So before you know one. it, before you know it, four out of the five all have two points. So it gets very intense towards the towards the end because now it's like. What's gonna happen to the fifth car? Is the fifth car gonna score? Yeah. Now we now we're gonna have all ties. Yeah. So the so it, it can drag on each yeah. each heat can drag on, so that you know that's why I commend him because he he has put so much effort and dedication yeah. to it, mm -hmm. where he has to like there's no there is no rehearsal there's no oh let, let me see how this is gonna sound it's yeah. like on the fly as it's, as it's happening mm -hmm. and it's live just like the real deal you, yeah. you know yeah. you go to yeah. the races it's like. All right, here comes this V8, you know, <laughs> yeah. Chevette and this yeah. Ford Pino, and it's like, you know, those are just two cars. Yeah, we're talking about multiple lanes here. Yeah, yeah. so you have to be like, you have to have the eye and know your turns yeah. and all that, so you can actually say what's happening. Yeah. So even if you're not watching, uh, people can listen. Yeah. And but it just it just makes it more intense when you're when you're there watching and listening sure. to the comments yeah. because it, it it brings up the intensity level even much higher than just yeah. ready set go yeah you know that's so. cool hey well, helm there's uh, i'm sorry uh, there's there's yeah. still a there's a story you're telling me about before we started that we want to get to it's uh, it has to do with a vehicle that you owned in the past that has some history here Oh yeah, it's um, uh, my uh, 2004 Mitsubishi Lancer Rally Art Sportback wagon, and um, I remember bringing that to the OJCM meet to the car meet. Yeah, and you guys were riding. I guess your your group of guys riding the bike, and you saw that car, um, and you you know you you definitely have seen one uh, uh, in person, and and you definitely gave the the love uh, when I I pulled up. But I didn't know that oh, yeah. um, Dorian, you know, he was he was still um, a little kid, and you always had affinity for that wagon. Well, uh, the the first time the first time I had ever like truly seen it was yeah. like, I think it was uh, junior year. Oh, okay, yeah, junior and year. and, and uh, backstory is that um, yeah, my niece uh, Laurel, um, she graduated from uh, John Burroughs. And same school. Same school. Last Shout year. out to. Uh, Mr. Piper, oh, yeah. uh, my brother-in-law has been a teacher over there for 20 plus years. Um, but she, yeah, she, I, I let her use it before she um, bought her new car and um, they were going to get rid of it. And oh, yeah. I said, you know, what? the perfect person was I was Frank, you know, because 
she told me yeah. that you had hit her up and asked her, yeah. like, um, are you going to ever sell it? And, sell she, and it, yeah. she was kind of like rude at first, like, yeah. no, I'm not selling it. <laughs> you know? Hey, yeah. Um, yeah, when he first told me the story, I'm, th- I'm, I'm thinking back. <laughs> Man, if I was in in her shoes, I'd like, "Who's this weirdo just waiting, <laughs> waiting around by my car, yeah, yeah. just just to come in? Hey, excuse me." And she's probably thinking, "Oh, this guy's gonna ask for my number." But no, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you want to sell your car? You know? <laughs> yeah. And so, like, and so, when I this? found out yeah. that you um, were um, inquiring about, it, I said, "No, that's the perfect person to um, let the car go to." And yeah. and I'm so happy that you know you bought it. And what's great about it is that you use your guys' hard-earned money uh, yeah. from your guys' business for that's it. That's cool. And I heard some stories. I'm not. I can't wait to see it. But yeah. I heard something about a hood that was picked up. Um, that well, don't don't give it. Away. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, wait. Yeah. That'll be another story yeah. when you when well, you guys yeah. are But it. hey, talk about hard earned money and business. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, because I we haven't mentioned it yet. Yeah. Can you plug the business so people can oh, find yeah. you guys? That's right. Social? So we are HW Racetrack. It's spelled exactly how it sounds like it is. Oh, no, Sound exactly like it there sounds like it is. Here it is on my shirt. Oh, my hands blocking yeah. the way. HW Racetrack. Yeah, it is. HW Racetrack Our on Instagram. Instagram. We don't have a Facebook set up because we wanted to keep it simple too. Yeah. And most people, you know, they, they, most people that follow us, they, they have Instagram. So we just said, you know what, we'll just create an Instagram name. So yeah. if people want to book you or whatever, they just do it all through Instagram and contact you. Yeah, on, on our Instagram, it'll, it'll list the, uh, our, our email okay. address, which is also hwracetrack at gmail.com. Okay. okay. And sometimes, you know, it'll be just a random question. Hey, do you guys do parties? Yeah. And, and then from there, we kind of, well, what kind of party is it? So, you know, sometimes even we, we've, we've had people do open houses oh, nice. uh, for new business, something that has nothing to do with cars, but yeah. they, they know, they realize that this brings people together no matter what. Yeah. 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 Like a friend of ours who, uh, shout out to him, uh, Lots of Pets, Harry, he, you know, he has his online store and he, he had a like a satellite store in Pasadena. And one mm-hmm. day he's like, he saw what we were doing. Oh, yeah. He said, like, hey, can you guys bring the track? And I was like, sure, it's a pit store. We're like, sure, why not? Yeah. Set it up right at, right in front of his That's storefront, so cool. a grand opening. That's cool. You know, even Casey Montoya from Channel 5, she oh, yeah. actually came and, and checked it out. And really? She actually participated in one of the races too. You know? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It's kind of cool, you know? So we got a video of that too as well. That's but cool. It, 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 is, I, it is something that, like I said, no matter what you, you, you know, you you can think of you can always bring bring it in bring it in yeah. or it, it, and people will always uh, even admire just exactly. just just because it's so it's miniature you exactly. know and it's and it's so practical too cuz yeah. like, yeah. what i see in our future um, i think there's going to be a sanctioned west of tulsa uh, race with all the crew members <laughs> yeah. anything oh, i do oh, 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 guys, oh, since, and, and, definitely and, have and, to do that and a huge thank you to you guys for gifting us um, um, these amazing cards which we'll, oh, yeah. we'll post up and show each other's you're going to um, build my cars. car yeah, mm-hmm. yeah i want to beat all these fools mm-hmm. it's going to cost you. it's going to cost you it always costs something so <laughs> oh, I'm willing to pay. It's, it's worth it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Build you an RX-7. <laughs> All right. Well, I, we really yeah. appreciate you guys coming on. Yeah. It's well, thank no, you. Yeah, thank really you. Thank you so thank much you for, for having, having us. us. Yeah. And it's really fun what you guys are doing. So we're going to keep an eye on that. Yeah. And we are going to race, by the way. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I look forward absolutely. to it. Yeah. That's going to be fun. Make sure my pockets are fine. <laughs> <laughs> when I show up. You bring your cash. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to kick his ass. <laughs> no. Nah, nah, nah. I, He's the customized. <laughs> yeah. I got the hook. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, Frank, Sebastian, Dorian. Dorian. Thank you again for coming in. And yeah, thank, thank, yeah, thank, you're, thank you're you for here. having us. All thank right. You. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. You also go to our tip line page. Um, we have our YouTube channel. Thank you. <laughs> and the uh, the tip line. If you go there, fill that out. We'd love to have you in studio. I'm sure you have a great story. All right. We'll see you west of Tulsa.